us live. We are live. Welcome to Collector Spotlight. I don't know what number it is. I think it may be number 11 or 12 or 13 or something like that. Uh, collector Spotlight, for those that are new to my channel, it's where I interview collectors from all over nerddom, whether they be YouTube uh, toy hunters, ACBA practitioners, collectors, uh, people that do customs, everything. We do everything here and I interview them. I uh, appreciate those of you that are in the chat. Uh, for those of you that have not been in the chat before, it is lively and it's not necessarily PG. I can't control it when I am doing the interview. And that being said, we typically do not interact with the chat during the interview because I'm focusing on the collector who I'm spotlighting. But at the very end, I will open up the chat to the questions uh, that you can ask away, and uh, as long as as it's a, as appropriate as it is for the, uh, as I like to say, the John Cena of the collecting world, I will read them, and my guest will answer them for you. And without further ado, my guest today is none other than Eric Eisner. He is active in the Facebook groups, particularly Open Box Mafia, where he runs Open Box Shots. Will you welcome? Eric Eisner, what is up? What's going on, Brock? What's up, everybody in the chat? Uh, it's good to be here. Excited about talking about some figs and, and figure photography, and I guess anything else uh, uh, Brock can, can whip up tonight. Oh, speaking about whipping up, the, the, the first question that I have for you that everybody wanted to know is, how big is your trout? <laughs> you, are you talking about the fish that I caught on, the other day? Are, are, are you being are you being are you being facetious here? Well, oh, I, yeah, yeah, I did say yeah, I'm, yeah. A, I'm a PG rated show, so I I'm, I'm not sure what you were referring to. I was referring to to this thing right here that everybody's seeing. How big is that thing? Uh the length was just over 28 inches and it weighed 10.25 pounds. Wow, not, that's not the biggest not not the biggest fish that I've ever caught but the biggest trout that I've ever caught uh, you know by by a long shot. Okay, so about, let me let me about, let me let me try to screen share this again because I think I, I had hit something wrong. Let me let me try it one more time. Are you seeing the picture of you with the trout? That's what I'm seeing right now. Okay. So, <laughs> to, I I I think I've gone fishing like once or twice, and uh, I've been unsuccessful of getting anything on the line. So I, I'm sorry. You were saying how how big is that trout again? That trout's ten and. 10 pounds, 10 and two, 10.25 pounds, Brock. Wow. Uh, that's, that's impressive. It's not quite as impressive as, as this trout right here that you caught uh, on the picture. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sorry. I couldn't, uh, I, I couldn't help myself. I had, I had to do it, but so this is also a trout right here, right? The second picture is, is a trout. Yes. <laughs> well, the one, the, yes. the one, the one I'm screen sharing right now, yeah. So, so this was uh, uh, the the same picture that I had used, and of course, you know, I was uh, it was just a, a little bit of joke, little joke, guys. And the, the trout just keep on getting smaller. Does it, I don't think that is a trout. Is that a trout? Yeah, that's a trout. That's probably not even a pound. That's eating size trout. That's probably twelve or thirteen inches, I guess. Okay. All these, are, all these are at the same lake, by the way. It's my local lake. And are you a are you a sports fisherman, or or is this like you're eating? Um, this thing? No. Well, gen most generally, I am. Um, occasionally, like largemouth bass, we I won't eat those. Uh, the smaller trout, I'll keep maybe two or three times in this throughout the spring, which is the season uh, that, that they're actually in, that you can keep them here. 
um, preferably uh, brook trout or rainbow trout are the two best to eat. And you, and the larger they are, uh, it's, I guess it's kind of like any animal. The meat gets a, a little rougher and tougher the larger the fish is. So generally about 10 to 15 inches or even less than that, I guess, is the size that you want to keep and eat. But uh, okay. generally, I, generally, I release most of what I catch. Um, that large fish I actually kept because I, I plan on getting a, a mount made. And I know that you don't have to actually harvest the fish to do that. Okay. Um, uh, you, you can uh, get measurements and, and length measurements and girth measurements and, and all that. And they can make replicas. But um, the water that I fish there is pretty, it's pressured pretty hard. So uh, the way my dad looked at it is, uh, you know, the next guy, that fish would have been caught again this spring and the next guy likely would have kept it. So, so these fish don't, don't learn uh, to, to stay off the hook then? Mm, no, not with the amount of pressure that they get. No, nah, um, they generally end up getting caught multiple times. Okay. So I must've so. been fishing in a lake where the fish were really, really smart because I literally caught nothing. Is there really? <laughs> Is there really is there really skill involved in in catching fish? And what are you catching it with, by the way? Oh yeah, there's definitely uh, there's definitely skill involved. Um, I like to fish with artificial um, artificial lures rather than a, like a live boat or uh, some type of, of salmon eggs or whatnot, which those catch a lot of fish, but. Um, that fish was actually caught on a, on a small, about a two and a half inch uh, rubber worm that is super thin, uh, dangled under a bobber about four feet. And you throw it out and then you gently uh, jig it back to, the, to you from, from where it's at. They hit it and then the bobber goes on. You wait a second and set the hook. Okay. So you you mentioned that uh, it's not the biggest fish that you caught, and to me, I mean that that, that was a you know fairly large fish. I mean, I, obviously, I'm not trained like or know like you are. You're you're going out there on a regular basis because I've seen you take a lot of those pictures. Matter of fact, if you go go on your Facebook uh, pictures, that I think you have more uh, more fish pictures than you have toy pictures, which is which is saying a lot. Uh, so what's, what was the yeah. biggest fish that you caught? You I think you mentioned it, but I missed it. The biggest fish that I've caught was a catfish, and it was 27 pounds. Okay, so when when you're hauling that thing or luring that thing into the boat, how like what's the pound pressure to to lift? Uh, I would imagine that that it's not 27 pounds, right? It's it's exponentially more than that. Yeah, yeah. The catfish that I caught was actually. Um, they have tournaments in some local ponds to here and you pay, uh, you go out and it's like eight hours um, after dark. So you use real heavy equipment. It's almost like saltwater equipment with real heavy uh, braking uh, test line under large bobbers that are about 12 to 14 inches long. And they're actually caught on live Big live bait, like big sunfish. Okay. You know, I was going to say, if if you needed to pack on some muscle, you just have to watch the collector spotlight from last week. And Josh Pence gave a lot of uh, tips on how you can get a healthy bod, stronger bod. So uh, you know what I'm talking about, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I saw that. I saw that. And actually, uh, I think he said fish was uh, some of the what he used to, I guess, in his diet. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, I should probably ask you the same thing because you're kind of a thin guy. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not. We're not. We're not going to go down that path. But I, I do want to start. I do want to start the collector questions. I just found the fish thing, uh, you know, kind of uh, interesting because, like I said, uh, fish are allergic to any hooks that I've ever used or any lure or any bait, whatever. They just don't like it. So where? So where's the fishing good? Where in the United States are you that the fishing is so good? I live in north central West Virginia, and in the spring, these trout, most of these trout aren't, most of these trout aren't, uh, aren't wild trout. The West Virginia Department of Fisheries and Game, they stock fish. They load up a big truck, 
and twice a month starting in March, they put about 800 to 1,000 pounds of fish into these lakes. Okay, that makes sense. They're basically, so they're, they're not basically fish to the area then. Right, right. These fish are basically put in to be harvested and then most of the people catch them and eat them. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, very good. So from, <laughs> from fish that you caught, that, that temp, did you catch any toys this past week? Uh, this past week, uh, let's see, what did I get? What did I get? Um, actually, I, uh, the Ghost Rider and Black Widow bikes came in. Um, and the Black Widow bike that I won from Tony Wynn's game night on his page, which is MOC Thugs. Uh, I know you're familiar with the page. It's a uh, 18 and up group. So I opened, I haven't opened either of the Black Widow bikes yet, but the, uh, the Ghost Rider bike uh, I opened and it's a, uh, it's a pretty nice set. Um, the only thing that, uh, the bike could use paint. It mm. needs, uh, all the engine. It's got really good sculpting on the engine work, but it needs, uh, it needs someone to, to dry brush it or put a wash on it. And the Ghost Rider is actually really nice. Um, the uh, the head sculpt is really similar, maybe the same as the one from the Rhino Build a Figure Wave. It just has a different um, it just has different paint apps. It has more of a bone look with a with a brown wash on it. Um, hey, so so f from I know that you haven't pulled the the Black Widow out of the box. I saw her today. At, it was a layaway spot in one of my local WalMarts. What's your opinion? Which is the better? And my little dog's trying to kill something outside right now. Uh, life with Brock, people. Shh, shut up. Get, get off the couch. What are you doing on the couch? This dog was on the couch. He's not supposed to be on the couch. What's happening here? I'm losing control. Hey, Eric, so uh, getting back to my question, uh, what, what do you think between the two figures? If you have only $40 to spend, where, where are you going to spend it on? Your Ghost Rider or the Black Widow? Oh, Ghost Rider, Ghost Rider. Yeah, I, I, I tell you what, I, I don't know why people are buying that Black Widow unless you know they're Black Widow fans. I saw it up close. I was not impressed with it at all. I know some people are completionists and are, are going to have to get it, but my guess is that that thing's going to be around at Ross. Uh, maybe I'm a little bit exaggerating. Maybe I'm exaggerating it a little bit, but uh, it, it didn't look very good to me. Uh, yeah, I'd agree. Um, the good thing, I, the good thing is, as far as I know, the case assortment is two Ghost Rider bikes and one Black Widow bike. So actually, the Black Widow bike should be the harder of the two to find since there's only one out of the three in a case. Um, and I was at Toys R Us today. I did see two Ghost Rider bikes, but I didn't see, uh, I didn't see the Black Widow. And yeah, I'm not really, I'm not really liking the Black Widow. Uh, the bike, I think, is is decent. Um, it's kind of bland as far as the paint is concerned, and the figure. I actually think the retro card Black Widow that we just got, you know, a few months back, is a better figure than the figure they give us with the Black Widow bike. Yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, that retro figure does look much better, uh, at least, you know, for, for my sensibilities. And the, the people that are watching, if you can't find them, uh, the Ghost Rider at your uh, local stores, uh, you can go to Amazon. I've seen it on Amazon. It was, uh, as of today, they still had it in stock, so jump on it. So, Eric, other than Marvel Legend, I know you're a big Marvel Legend collector because you – you're an ACBA practitioner, and we're going to get to that in a little bit. But what other sure. lines of toys do you collect? What other lines do I collect? Um, my main properties, of course, is Marvel and Star Wars. With Marvel, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty diehard on the Marvel Legends. Um, and then I'll fill in some stuff with Mezco. Uh, some SH figure arts, which those are all movie figures, which I'm not uh, I'm not the biggest fan of the movie figures, although most of them are good figures. I'll give them that. I just prefer the comic uh, look for the characters. Uh, the the Moffex uh, Spider-Man from the Homecoming movie was a was a great, great figure. 
and as a movie figure that that I like regardless, just due to the posability of it and all the hand options and whatnot that it comes mm -hmm. with. Um, Star Wars, of course, is going to be Black Series, uh, SH Figure Arts. I've got 15 or so of those. I don't keep up with those like Caesar, um, but I do. People get, in the chat want to know if you collect pops. Are you, are you, are you a pop collector? No, nah, I don't. I own three pops that I bought for friends um, when I bought them. And then after I bought them, nobody wanted them. So I have three. <laughs> Uh, what, what are they? What what pops? What pops are they that nobody wanted them? Let's see. One of them is the Destro. I think it was in some kind of a exclusive or maybe a con exclusive or a true. Uh, I don't know. It has like the metallic uh, metallic sheen on the head. Okay. And the other two were I got at Fye. I know one Cody Black wanted. Um, it was, it's a, uh, Chewbacca with like the, uh, I think it's called flock or it's like a, it kind of has like a fuzz to the, instead of the plastic, it's kind of has like a fuzz, like a furry look to it, holding a porg. And I got two of those because somebody else wanted the other one and then nobody took any of the three. So okay. I got stuck with three pops. Never, never again. I'm not, I'm never put, I'm never, uh. I'm never taking a request for pops again. <laughs> what are you doing with them? Maybe you should uh, give them away. Do a giveaway on your uh, IG. I think, or... I think, I think Jesse wants the Destro pop, but I'm not sure. That's who I got it for initially. And me and Jesse had a trade set up from back before OBM even started, back in the syndicate days, for... Uh, Arkham Red Hood uh, GameStop exclusive and an Arkham Arkham Knight Batman for a, two original trilogy Stormtroopers and that trade just got completed about a month ago so maybe in another six months or so Jesse will get that Destro pop. <laughs> that, that's, that's, that's funny. So what other uh, what's the highest end line that you collect as far as you know per figure how much I got Marvel uh, Legends are twenty dollars. Then you got then you got your SH figure arts yeah. with you know seventy to eighty dollars. Yeah, I don't collect one six scale. I only collect one twelve scale, uh, and the masterpiece transformers. So probably the masterpiece transformers are going to be uh, the most expensive line that I collect. I don't get a lot of figures that are super super expensive like. Well, I say super, super, but $200 is still expensive. Uh, that Skyfire is probably one of the more expensive figures that I bought. Yeah. How, how much did that go for? It was like $190 or something like that. That it was, it was pretty I think I paid 200 but Yeah. I paid 200 in shipping for, for mine. So it was probably like 210. So what, what, what started it all for you? Like, like who's your, your favorite superhero? Was it based on the comics, cartoons? <laughs> what was it? Uh, my favorite hero now is Captain America. When I was younger, um, growing up in the eighties, I mostly collected GI Joe and star Wars. The Marvel stuff didn't come till I was in, till I was a teenager and collecting comic books. So Captain America is going to be my favorite Marvel hero. Um, star Wars. I liked Han Solo and transformers was a toss up between Optimus prime and um, uh, mostly just Optimus Prime. There were several Autobots that I liked. I also liked Starscream and Megatron too. So I kind of grew up watching that cartoon. It sounds like you prefer the uh, the hero, not the not the the villains. Not not so much. I mean, I cl I, I collect it all now. But as I you know, as a youth, I, I was more hero, I guess, oriented for sure. So when did it start for you? Uh, collecting didn't start till later. Uh, when I was younger, it was more just having toys to play with, obviously. Right. Um, but I had, my mother and grandparents used to get me, uh, the, uh, the vintage Star Wars figures and the, um, the vintage G.I. Joe 
as well as the G1 Transformers. Now, I still have some of that stuff, but a lot of that's went by the waste side as, I, as I've gotten older and moved out and never bothered to, to, uh, to worry about hanging on to a lot of it until it was already too late. Okay. So mostly the, uh, the, the G.I. Joe and the uh, Transformer cartoons and the original trilogy Star Wars movies is kind of what got me buying toys as a, as a kid or, so, or receiving toys, I guess. So now as an adult collector, do you remember what was your uh, the first figure that got you back into collecting or got you into collecting, I should say? Yeah, it's funny you should ask. Um, it actually wasn't... Um, it was about five, five or six years ago, and at first I didn't buy a lot of stuff. But it was when the um, the Dark Knight trilogy was out, and right. Mattel made the uh, Mattel made the six inch Movie Master figures. There was uh, the Dark Knight Rises. Um, build a bat symbol. That was the first line that I got into because I was super into the movies, and the figures are trash now. Now that I look back on them, the articulation is uh, is kind of bad. They they look decent, but they're not for. Uh, it's not something that I would collect now. Gotcha. But those were the those were the first uh, those were the first figures I got, and uh, shortly after that was the uh, Marvel Legends. Iron Man three wave, which was the Iron Monger, the comic Iron Monger wave, the blue Iron Monger, and pretty much since then it's it's been a wrap. I've I've stayed with it up through through uh, through Marvel Legends. And so just when, added. So when it comes to like Marvel Legends and uh, or, or Marvel and DC, do you collect any DC toys currently? Um, pick and shoes, but not. Not a lot. The only DC stuff that I will get will be um, Batman or Batman related. So the last DC stuff that I got was the um, the Mezco Deathstroke. Okay. And, which is a super nice fig super nice figure. And um, I also have the PX exclusive version pre ordered, which is the all black and with a little bit of orange. And um, the uh, Dark Knight Returns Batman, which was Mezco 112's first figure they put out about three, three and a half years ago. But I don't buy a lot of DC. It's got to be Batman or Batman related, a Batman villain. Got it. Okay. Well, that, that, that's understandable. So what's the, so you're, you said you're expecting to, to pick up, um, what's the DC line that you said you're going to pick up? It's the Mezco 112. It's Holy, the, uh, wait a second. What? Oh no! Bam, bam, bam! Oh, what is that? Smears? Dude, what are you? What are you doing on here, man? I broke into the mainframe to break into Eric Eisner's meeting. So what's up, man? There's a uh, fresh news coming that uh, Eric Eisner is one of the greatest toy hunters slash picture takers in the world reporting live at Schmears TV through Open Box Mafia. Well, it's funny because Schmears TV was supposed to be at a toy store right now. <laughs> what happened, player? I thought you had breaking news for us. Drugs and drinking is what happened, Sir Brock. Well, I'm, I'm happy you're not uh, you're driving right now then. <laughs> this one, I got my purple drink. Straight from Wakanda. It gives me special powers. So here's to everybody out there watching my homie Eric Iser, the hardest working man on the internet. Well, uh, uh, Eric, uh, I'm kind of thrown for a loop too right now. So, Jesse, since you're on here, why don't you uh, tell us the, what's the, what are a couple things that you like about Mr. Eric Eisner? Um, well, one thing I like about my buddy here is, you know, he came on with Open Box Mafia from the beginning. Uh, you know, we used to see him at the syndicate all the time with all his uh, pictures. And he was, uh, you know, doing things like in uh, the syndicate pictures over there, as well as he was active at, um, I always mess up this acronym. It's ABCA. A -A show, show him your shirt, Eric. Show him your shirt real quick. ACBA, right? There, there you go. 
Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, you got yeah. it. So, you know, one thing is uh, I was telling you, Brock, was, you know, a lot of times was uh, Caesar would say, hey, what do you think about this guy? Like, you know, what do you think about him going live or, you know, being a part of our group? And, um, you know, I, I, I was kind of out of the loop, you know, and uh, I met Eric and uh, for the last six months, uh, I think he's probably one of our biggest contributors to our, our page. Um, I believe like he's part of our pillars. He's uh, done a lot to innovate, you know, our page and, I get a lot of feedback from people. They always say like good things about Eric. They literally will tell me, Hey, by the way, Eric Eisner, dude, shh, that dude, that guy's one of the best out there. And I'm like, you know, thank you for telling me that. Cause you know, uh, I always tell these guys, I appreciate all their hard work, but uh, you know, we're not getting paid for this. We're, we're really out there just trying to have fun and make the page entertaining. So I, I constantly try to tell them how much we appreciate them over there. Yeah, and uh, that, I noticed that too. And Eric does do a lot of for the uh, toy community, specifically at Open Box Mafia. But he also, you know, interacts in ACBA and the Syndicate and other groups. Uh, do you mind sticking around? Because I actually want to do some screen shares right now with Eric, and uh, we're going to display some of his work. And I and and if you, it, can you are are you able to stay for uh, just a few more minutes, or are you uh, are you in the middle of partying right now? No, actually, I kicked everybody out, so we're good. Okay, so Eric, <laughs> so I'm going to bring you back on here, bro. So since he's just talking about ACBA, could you just tell? Me, and, I, and I and I do this with uh, you know some of the other people that have come on that that are familiar with ACBA. Could you just give an introduction as I'm going to take uh, I'm, as I'm going to do this screen share? Then we're going to take a look at some ACBA shots. Sure thing, brother. Go Thanks ahead. for the kind words, Smooth. Bam, bam, bam. Eric, when bam, you, bam. give us a, a definition of ACBA. ACBA is an acronym for Articulated Comic Book Art. And basically what it is, is it is a tangible uh, style of photograph where you're not using um, post picture edits after you've already taken the picture so everything has to be done uh everything has to be done tangibly and naturally shut up uh, Stupid dog. he's having the same <laughs> problem i was <laughs> yes Pinche perro. so basically there's just unedited pictures brock it's all it's all up to uh which it which is actually uh, difficult to achieve uh, good results with some of it. It just takes practice and time. Got it. I'm trying to bring that up right now. There it is. So you know, uh, you know what I like about the the uh, pictures and stuff is, you know, uh, we always get people telling us it's hard for them to open up their toys, right? So you know, once you start opening up the toys, it's kind of like the relief you get when you go live on on open box or whatever, right? It's kind of scary, you know, to do, but once you get it going, it it feels good. You start playing with your toys, you start, you know, doing stuff. Cause I get it, you know, MOC, you want to keep your stuff mint. And and the feeling I had when I used to do that was that I I wanted them to hopefully gain value, I guess. And then, you know, you start thinking like that. And uh, you know, these things are produced like massively, so it's not like you're going to get that much of a grail nowadays, I think, you know? Yeah. And so, so play what, with your toys, play with your toys. Well, and, and yeah. this is, and this is a good example here, Eric, um, along with plastic, uh, plastic addict, George, uh, he, they run, you know, for syndicate and open box, they run these, uh, contests on a weekly basis. So this was, uh, uh from this past week. So the, the winner was Mark DeRosa and then Alvin DeBandan and then Jeff Roach. And why don't we take a look at, uh, at these shots? So can, can you describe oh, – so I know that this isn't – you guys don't do strict ACBA, correct, Eric? Um, not, not, strict, yeah. not strict ACBA, but it's basically, the, it's basically ACBA guidelines. Uh, no Photoshop and no um, – no after uh, 
post shot edits. So it's all it's all got to be it's all got to be. Ta- but it's not it's not strict ACBA guidelines. I don't guess so, what to speak. Uh, what's particular like what's the the best thing about this shot right here from the ACBA standard? I think uh, I think he may be Mark maybe in the, in the chat too. Mark uh, Wilson may be there. Yeah, this is Mark. Mark has won the contest. Um, I'm going to say this is the second time. I know he had done a nice outdoor shot with a pop. Um, he I think he won that one as well. But uh, what I like about this shot, baby, come here. In particular, is the composition is nice. Uh, he bought. He's got a nice base uh, set up, showing the reflection of the black board and all coming through. Uh, he's got an effect, a saber effect on the Qui-Gon Jinn to make it look like it's in motion. And uh, the composition, the clarity, and the color is all really good. Okay, okay. very good. Let, let me switch pictures. And hey, you know what I was going to say, Brock, about yeah. that picture, though? Yeah. Um, if you go back to do you see the ground right there? Yes. So Mark DeRosa, he's into like uh, doing dials and stuff right now. He has a really cool subway dial that he made, and it connects to no becoming like a, a office. And he actually literally like made each plank for that office. So <clears throat> Mark DeRosa really goes like he'll he'll put in a couple weeks on a on a dial or on a pitcher. So you see the ground right there, how it reflects like that. Yeah. He actually went and bought. Uh, that type of plastic that black pure black plastic mm-hmm. to make the ground look like that so he's yeah. been working on that for a minute and the the picture shows it it actually looks like you know in the movie the ground is black and it's shiny as heck right right so he bought that uh i forgot what kind of plastic is that eric it's it's black acrylic no it looks good yeah yeah very, he, he went the distance nice shot yeah, he went the distance on that shot. Uh, the blast doors are from a, th- a third party company that makes um, they're called space walls. Uh, it's basically just so that they don't have to use the uh, copyrights of the Death Star. Uh, but it's made to look like Death Star uh, a blast doors and then the uh, panels as well. And yeah, Mark goes the distance. He's uh he's getting it. He's uh he's diverse. I mean, he collects, but he also he's also building dioramas. He's buying uh, 112 scale vehicles and repainting them, uh, getting all these different effects and whatnot. So he, he puts in the time, and, and it's, it really shows. It really shows. That, was, uh, Very that, that shot deserved a win last week, so I'm, gl- I'm, glad, I'm glad it came out on top. So then – and then this is the uh, number two shot. Uh, because I, I really don't want to get into critiquing other people's work, but – so just tell me, like, one – like positive thing that you like about this shot and then we'll move on. What we'll do is we'll critique your work. So we'll, we'll put your work out and then you can really get down because you, you know, your feelings won't get hurt. <laughs> you, you yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Right. Right. Um, the lighting and the posing are, are on point. Um, the background looks good. I know that is a dio that Ricardo Rosario made uh, from toy comics, Inc. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I know Alvin has got a dio and some props from Rico. So I'm pretty sure that that background was uh, Rico's dio. Uh, the, yeah. Like I said, the lights, the posing, uh, the concept is fairly creative. So uh, <clears throat> now another deserving shot to get in the top three this week. Alvin's been uh, doing you know good what? work. One, one thing I, I wanted to say was Alvin yeah. is actually kind of like a newer member of ours. So that's one thing I like about open box shots and as well as what we do at open box mafia is we constantly try to make it, you know, a place to go to have fun where you feel welcome. Uh, so in regards to that is like, we're getting an influx of people, you know, uh, from uh, watching YouTube shows or somewhere they might've seen the name or whatnot. So um, <clears throat> he came up, uh, Alvin, we love uh, his participation as well as all our new members, uh, it's what makes the, the pages go, right? So um, no shout doubt. out to him for, you know, putting in the picture. A lot of people sit there and they don't do anything. It's like this this isn't to just, you know, you got to try something and, and get a little critique here and there. I mean, I haven't posted any pictures, but I've been talking to Eric, letting him know that it's I've been playing with my toys more. 
I'm trying to pose them better. Right. And eventually I want to get into, you know, taking some pits and trying to subscribe as well. Right. And see, and here, you know, Jeff, Jeff is doing that. He's, he's participating. He's not necessarily, you know, ACBA. Some of the other guys obviously have done some ACBA shots before, but this one uh, is appropriate because, you know, this Thanos (laughs) just came out. The movie's about to come out and it's an interesting (laughs) shot. So what do you like about this one, Eric? I like it's uh it's creative and and it's funny and spider spider man is actually in a pretty good pose um and like like smear said about alvin um now jeff wasn't much of a loose uh collector until recently he just exactly. recently started open he just recently started open opening his figs a little bit right and posts around and you know, you can see that just in a short amount of time, you know, he's getting to where he can pose them, use a little bit of creativity. And, and it's good to see because, as Jesse said earlier, um, we keep all these toys, uh, a lot of these people keep these toys uh, sealed up in a package um, for maybe uh, an appreciative value in the future or, or, or just maybe that's just how they like to collect them. And that's fine. Um, but in my personal opinion, uh, you know, when you do go to open your figs and mess with them, it's kind of like it's kind of like that release, like Jesse said. It's it's almost like, uh, you know, they're free, and, and these are the way these are what their their intended purpose is to be taken out of the package, um, posed and displayed, you know, and used creatively. And and Jeff is Jeff is uh, Jeff's definitely been doing that lately. Is so. that, I'm just curious. Is that Jeff in the chat at CB2K761? He says my poses are got garbage. I love seeing other people's. Is that Jeff? No, no that's I Jeff Roach right there. I can't. I think that's Chris. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that's Chris. Hey, one thing I love because you got to remember I, I, in our, our little locker room or whatnot, Jeff was like so happy with this he was just like check this out spoiler <laughs> alert spoiler <laughs> alert spoiler, it was like spoiler alert spoiler alert. look at this picture like I, and it was just for me it was the enthusiasm i mean right. it wasn't even like i heard his voice but through his text i could see the enthusiasm he well, was just sure, like he came, people just, voted it in you know he came in third and uh like you said if he's just starting to open up his figures then uh I can only see him improving, maybe getting a dial in the future. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know what? Shout out to some of our, I'd like to thank, you know, some of our admins and stuff or mods that came in recently, you know, uh, we're lucky. We, we have a great batch of people that help us out. So it's like uh, Grant, he's new to the group and that guy, he uh, gets a lot of good figs out there. Uh, Bryant, you know, shout out to Bryant. He's like the toy hunters hunter. Yeah, come on. Um, Pronounce his uh, last name. I, I know. We were practicing. Marcel. No, but you have to say it like a man, That's though. Ma- Marcel. That's a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you know, the, these are uh, newer guys in the crew. You know, uh, you know, a lot of them are, are keeping their stuff mint in box. And, you know, we tell people the open box mafia is a name. So we don't force anybody to open their things. They can even do a show on open box mafia and not open it up. You know, I, I don't see a problem in that, but you know, a lot of people hear the name and they feel like they have to open it. The reason we encourage opening up stuff is because of like his pictures, you know, Eric constantly shows us uh, poses. He's doing uh, things that I've learned is you can tell like in the background, how you can see like the pink uh, colors or whatnot. Right. So, you know, those are things that I'm noticing in other people's pictures and whatnot or how they get, the lighting and stuff like that. It's uh, it's you see the picture, right? But then when you see the outside picture, I love that part my, myself because I, I like making movies and videos and stuff. So a lot of work into going into these pictures. So Eric, let, let's talk about this because the pretty much this whole the whole next segment it's going to be your shots that that you put up on uh, for me to use right now. So why don't we, like somebody that's starting out in ACBA, that's never done ACBA, but, you know, it's been watching and uh, they finds it interesting, what they want to get a little bit more out of their collecting. You know, some people do YouTube, other people do ACBA to expand their, uh, other people, you know, do customs. It just makes the right. collecting a little bit, uh, gives it a little bit more depth and it expands and, and maybe it helps you save a little bit extra money if you're just spending time doing uh, shots. So why don't we... 
look at your pictures and then start like teach me because I mean, I, I have a little bit of a concept, but I've never done ACBA myself. I'd be interested in knowing, you know, what about this is in the rules and what could have been better uh, to be sure. more accurate to the rules. So go ahead. You, you got the, you got the conch. Sure. Sure. Um, so basically um, to take, to do ACBA, a lot of people think that you need uh, you know, a DSLR camera and a, you, you know, those things are nice to have, but you can achieve a lot of the pictures you're going to show on here. I did on, you know, my cell phone. I just recently got a camera uh, back in December. So the main thing with ACBA is you want it to be clean. You want it to be clear, cropped, and contained. So by meaning contained, you don't want to see, um, like, say you got this set up on a table or on a desk. You don't want to see something off to the sides or on the tops or or on the bottom. <laughs> Basically, every picture you're going to take, you're going to crop down to a smaller size uh, to, to get it cropped right. Um, clear is basically uh, the clarity, and contained will just be not showing anything outside the picture. Um, generally, you're going to want your pictures <clears throat> lit. You want your pictures lit from behind slightly, above, and from the front. And you're going to, you're going to want to make sure the background is lit up. Unless okay. you're trying for unless you're trying for a shot um, that the background is dark and you're trying to make it appear to be nighttime, so you got to get lights on the background. You got to get lights above your subject and lights going onto your subject. Got it. And you. So, so what, what in this picture right here? What would you say is the like the the best part about uh, this shot? Just but just say one thing. What's the best thing that you My see? My favorite part about this shot is the way the light is hitting uh, the lower part of the horse. Even though a horse shouldn't be uh, kind of glossy like that, but I, 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 the lighting in general is my favorite part about this shot. Just the lighting. So would it be fair to say if you had to do this shot over again, would you use a matte horse, or would you use a horse that, like for the same lighting because that's your favorite part? So I guess to improve the lighting, would you, would you use a better uh, figure uh, or a figure that wouldn't reflect light like that? Um, that's one solution. But to be honest, I could have uh, hit a little less light on the lower part of that horse and it would have been – you wouldn't see that as much. So I guess I would love, I would uh, dial the light back a little bit on the lower part of the horse. and uh, that, I'm, that a, I'm a beginner. You know what I, I would have done on that would – Maybe put like a blue light going that way on the horse, so then it gives it like a dark, makes it look dark, like it's nighttime kind of. Right. What do you think yeah. about that, Eric? Yeah, you, you could Damn, Ben will do that as well. But you know what stuck out for me on this picture, Eric and Brock was uh, the rocks. The rock to the left, like the the light hitting that, it it makes me say, "Oh shit, this looks like a real background, right?" Um, right. And then as well as you got the uh, cotton or whatever for that smoke effect. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty dope. Because it makes you forget yep. that it's on a table, right? Yep. Yep. It's on a table. There's a diorama base and the two pieces on the left and right back behind the horse are little rock uh, diorama pieces. You know, and what I thought was a really cool picture that uh, for someone who doesn't take a lot of pictures is a, uh, uh, Caesar had took that picture of the evil dead. Yeah. And he like literally had a lie on his stomach. He said he had a lie on his stomach to get that angle. And it almost looks like a diorama, but I think it yeah. was uh, uh, the back, like it was like a dirt, a clot of dirt and then a tree in the background, but it made the tree look small from the angle that he, like, that was pretty crazy. You know, like uh, a lot of filmmakers, yeah, I know the what days, they had to yeah. use, yeah, I know what shot you're talking about, and the way the light, the way um, the sun was lit at that time too, it made the uh, it made the whole picture look um, kind of eerie, almost like it was uh, like post production Photoshop, but it wasn't. I mean, I know Caesar just took it straight up, and all the rocks it was and a, stuff it was, around made a good natural diorama. Yeah, it was it was like a a really overcasted, ugly day, and it gave that picture like an eerie scariness to it, right? 
Yep, 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 yep. That was uh, Caesar well, what, placed in the we, top three that what, week in, in the uh, contest. I remember. We talk about pictures that we can actually look at uh, and critique. So let's look at yeah. how, about, how about this yeah. one right here. Is that Rico right there? No, this is all. This is going to be all of uh, Eric's work. Oh, right snap. Here. Damn, that's dope. So, Eric, ACBA, give us like another pointer here with this picture for people that are wanting to learn. Uh, not too much light, too much light coming from the front. You can see some shadows um, hitting the, uh, the side of the stoop. There's a stoop of steps coming down that you can just barely see on the left side. And there's some shadows hitting that. So I needed to get a little bit more light coming from the top to kind of eliminate those shadows. Also, the corner of the stoop is not flat on the ground, if you'll notice that. Um, I'm nitpicking it, but, I mean, that's what you want me to do. So yeah, absolutely. Those are, the two, those are the two main things in that shot. The shadows there on the lower left and the stoop coming up off the ground there, the corner of the, the but stairs. But you have a beginner taking this shot. If, a, if it's a beginner taking this shot, like if I take this shot, I'm pretty happy with it. Mm -hmm. Right, somebody that's uh, starting off? That is my second highest like picture on the ACBA page, okay. and the picture you, and the picture you showed before that is my most liked picture. So you started out with my two most liked uh, pictures on the ACBA page. So yeah, mm -hmm. I'm happy with that. That's that's about a three three year old two two and a half or three year old shot. So when when you think were getting critiqued on on the ACBA page, was one of their comments the lighting comment? Uh, the lighting, also that um, Spidey's foot is not flat on the ground, and okay. and the shadows. If you can see, Spidey's foot isn't quite flat on the ground. That was uh, that was my number one critique that I remember. Okay. Uh, which that's a good, that is an actual good part of about if you can see his foot, right? It's not quite flat. It's raised a little which, bit. You, know, you, you you can also argue the point that Spider Man might be trying to back away. And push off with his with the toe of his uh, with his toes, and then you know, in which case his foot wouldn't be totally flat, regardless. Uh, but that's one of the things about the AC pay, ACBA page that makes it great is that the people in there are going to give you advice and critique your work. So you know, as long as you don't have thin skin and take it for what it is, you know, it's all to help you, you know, make you improve. So that's one of the things. Uh, one of the many things I'll do like about the pages that people are wanting. All right, cool. So what about this shot right here? Okay. That's dope. Stormtroopers uh, lacking a little bit of light. Uh, the light could be coming through the space wall a little better. And I also needed a better base for this. I don't have an acrylic base like Mark has. This was just a flat black piece of foam i believe it looks decent i think the posing is all right um i just something about the lighting uh it looks a, the stormtroopers look a little green to me so okay um that's probably my main thing is just the lighting i think the posing and the composition is pretty decent uh, but the lighting just looks a little bit funky to me and that's another one that's that's another two and a half year old picture that's moving on and now this is the – anytime I see a picture that looks like this with the background, I know it's yours because you – Yeah. it's almost like your calling card on uh, – because the, the, fit, the first picture I showed had a similar uh, – it wasn't the same color, but it was a very similar look. Right. right. Until recently, I, I've just now started getting into uh, dioramas, and I've gotten uh, – a couple and some other pieces and before uh back even as far back as last summer i didn't have a lot of dioramas to work with so um i would use props like i use that tree a lot you saw it in the dread night picture as well right, um, right. colored post, uh, colored poster board um i like pink and in this particular shot um this is a two-tone poster board that goes from yellow uh, to orange, it kind of fades into orange, so it kind of looks almost like a sunset. And if you hit the light down towards the bottom uh, a little bit more intense, like it is on this picture, it'll even look more like that. So uh, I, I definitely use the yellow to orange uh, poster board a lot in my pictures. And people think they need dioramas to take pictures. Uh, 
Uh, you don't need dioramas to take pictures. You just need something as a backdrop, uh, something as a base that doesn't look like a table or a desk or whatever. You got to create an illusion. So if you have poster board and some kind of base to set your figures on and you get it lit properly and the figures are posed well, I mean, uh, that's really all you need and you can take it from there. You don't need a diorama to take good pictures. Well, talk about creating an illusion. Uh, I mean, this is a pretty, I mean, it's pretty sweet. You can see it's the, the, the blast from Claw and, uh, and Black Panther is coming right. It, that, that's Black Panther, right? Not Killmonger, right? That's the, uh, the, the Walmart Black Panther, the, uh, the classic one. Not the Pink Panther, but the one that was before that. <laughs> the uh, uh, well, the two-pack two Claw. What would be your, 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 your top uh, critique? And then the thing that you like the best about this shot. Uh, my top peak is that you can see the stand holding up Black Panther ever so slightly, and you can oh, yeah. also see this. You can see the stand right under Claw's um, right uh, elbow arm. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And you can barely right to the to the uh, right to the side of Claw. You can barely see the clear stand going up that's holding up the uh, the wind effect or the uh, blast effect. Yeah, that's funny. If, if you wouldn't have that, I would have never seen it. It's right by his elbow. Yeah, I see it. You see it, Jesse? What on the right elbow? Yeah. Yeah, I you know when I seen this picture, I liked it a lot. I because I think Eric used a different uh, effect for that. Uh, wasn't that like one of those effects you can buy extra effects or something, bro? Yeah, yeah, Jesse. It's a uh, Bondi. The company that makes figure arts, it's a Bondi effect. It's like a swirl. Um, if you stand it up, it's supposed to be, it's called a wind effect. Um, I took a, another shot uh, that has Dormammu uh, up in the middle of it that I don't think Brock has. But, yeah, it's it's a, it's a uh, aftermarket effect that you can buy. Yeah, I think I think I, I – for me, being somebody who doesn't know that stuff as well, I just love when I see you guys uh, use other effects, right? Obviously, that, that isn't a Marvel uh, effect or anything, because you, normally it's like a Doctor Strange or something, whatnot. But, right. uh, you know, the way that you use something totally else from, I like that as well, like you're saying, uh, you didn't need no diorama for that picture, right? Nope. Just the, uh, just the orange uh, backdrop. And and that's it. And I've got some blue finger lights hitting the uh, the effect to kind of give it that blue uh, hue to it. Other and, than and that, just to, it and, was... and just to give a little shout out, uh, I know Eric. He recently got a uh, Hydra dial from our friend Rico. That is just sweet, dude. I mean, for as quick yep. as uh, Rico did it, man. Shout out to Rico. This guy is just—he's talented. Yeah. He's he's a he's a loving person. He's a giving person, and he just he hooks it up uh, just out of his heart. And uh, he hooked up Eric. I think that dial is awesome. It, it fits well with your red skull that you have, yep. Um, as well as that new one that you got uh, with the the arches and stuff. Um, yep. Yeah, that one is really nice. I think there's a lot of uh, good stuff that you're gonna do with that. Yeah, Rico does really good work. Um, I haven't got a chance to use the hydro, the hydra base, the hydra throne, a diorama yet, and I'm kind of trying to hold off on using <clears throat> the dios for too many shots until I get uh, settled back in at my house because it's just such a pain to, to get stuff out and break it down here uh, where I'm at. But um, yeah, Rico, uh, shout out to Rico, uh, Ricardo Rosario, and Toy Comics. Uh, he hooked me up with this a uh, really nice uh, Hydra Throne Dio, and he does super good work. Really timely too. Like uh, most people would take weeks, he does the stuff in days. It's, it's crazy how 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 good he is and how fast he does the work. I think we have a few more shots, Eric, that that you provided, and some ACBA pointers from this one. Okay, so other. Uh, this, this is another of the two-tone poster board in the background. This poster board goes from green uh, to blue. Um, the angle that I'm seeing this at, you can't really see the blue except for the very top. It's starting to turn blue. Um, also, on the space pod, I put in uh, two red finger lights inside the space pod to mm. kind of light it up. 
to make it look like that it's uh, the controls are kind of glowing in there or whatnot. You can kind of see it clear uh, part of the space pod and back behind Vegeta. And then I just got some polyester uh, strung out along the bottom to make it kind of look like a little bit of smoke where the pod has just landed. Right, very good. A little think, bit of posing. Yeah. Oh, this one right here, going back, a little bit of posing here. And I think this may be the – I think it may be the final – oh, no, almost the final one. Uh, yeah, that's the uh, Mezco death stroke that I was talking about earlier. Um that's on a rooftop dio and with the uh, orange, yellow to orange uh, poster board behind him. Uh, sunset type shot, just death stroke posted up, or uh, death stroke posted up, looking down over the city. Uh, pretty simple shot, but that that looks easy. like a comic book cover right there, huh? It does. Yeah. Yeah, it come out pretty good. I was pretty happy with that one. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. I, I really like this one. This, this one won you uh, a couple of – it won you on the Syndicate and an Open uh, Box Mafia, right? Wasn't this a winning shot in the same week? Uh, yeah, week before last, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, uh, a couple weeks shot. back. Look at uh, – uh, you know what I like the best? Uh, the way that you put the uh, – Kill among your feet. Well, no, not the feet. I'm, I'm looking at the, like, the water effect that he used, this, the polyester fill. Okay. It looks like it's water that's coming up, right? Yeah. Is that Yeah, it's just to, it's just to uh to simulate like debris coming up off the ground, like dust or or a splash or or you know whatever you want it to be. Uh I know somebody asked why why uh smoke was coming up off the ground. I think they were just trying to clown me. Okay. Uh but it's yeah, it's just supposed to, just supposed to be debris. Coming up off the ground, just dust or like he's splashing in a puddle or something. Yeah, I, the I really posing. Like I like the I like the posing on that one, and a little tip, <clears throat> you can't see it, but actually behind Killmonger, I took a half a toothpick, and I put a piece of wax on one end, and I had to actually anchor the toothpick down into the dio ever so slightly on the base, and then prop the prop it up into Killmonger's back. With oh. the wax kind of sticking to his back, that's how he's able to stand up like that. Oh, that's, nice. that's dope. I like. I was tripping like, how you got it totally inverted yeah. like that? Yeah, oh, his, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. The angle. Uh, yeah, so because guess, he wouldn't. He wouldn't stay. He wouldn't stay up like that by himself. So you kind of. You kind of had to. Uh, so I kind of had to support him with something back behind it. Uh, where you can't, where it's out of frame, you can't see it. Yeah, the, the posing's off the hook. And Eric, so if if we're critiquing it, that back foot is not all the way down, right? So you would want it to be all the way down? Is That's that what correct. We for? Okay, good. See, I learned yeah. something. And Thank you. One, <laughs> one, of, one of my guys on ACBA actually critiqued me for that. He said he thought it was a great shot, but he said if you got that foot down, and I, it's just one of those things, you just move it. Sometimes uh, when you take these pictures, I'll take – 50, 60, 70 pictures, and I'll filter through them all, get the one I want, get it uh, cropped and everything just the way I, you know, just the one I want, and I'll post it, and it won't be till later on till you know, that I'll still miss stuff. So, right. and, and what are you using to crop? You said, are you, what program do you use? Um, it's called Aviary, and it basically, uh, you can crop your photos, and you can adjust, you can adjust the color levels in that as well. Um, I don't do that very much. Sometimes I'll, I'll tweak it ever so slightly. But if you tweak those color levels much in uh, in uh, these uh, these programs, it'll make your pictures look. Uh, it'll reduce the clarity, and it'll add graininess to them. So it's not anything I recommend. Got it. Yeah, this is also a pretty cool shot. Spider Man uh, almost losing here. Hey, that picture right uh, there made me want to buy the whole wave right there. <laughs> right there. I want to buy that lizard yeah. right there. I was like. Yeah, you, you would think that that uh, Hasbro would go to some of these ACBA guys and have them set up the uh, the product shots. For real. And that gets, talk, that gets talked about in the ACBA page a lot. Um, well, I wouldn't say a lot, but, but, but occasionally it does. And we do actually, there are actually a few people in there that companies will um, use their photos uh, on their, like their Instagram pages. 
I don't know about actual product shots, but but really they 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 should do that. I know I know NECA uses uh, some people's uh, work, as well as um, uh, Sergeant Bananas. I think it's uh, gets used by a company or two, but I can't think of what it is off the top of my head. But uh, like Jesse said, or like you said, yet yeah, uh, ha Hasbro would be wise uh, to use. Uh, some of the better people in the group, I think it would it actually help to sell their products. Hey, uh, Eric, I think that's a good point in regards to, uh, you know, uh, by the way, you guys can't see uh, Jesse right now, or maybe you can see Jesse. He's hugging Pit, <laughs> the Pit Bath right now. <laughs> I don't know if you yeah, guys can see it or not, but he's, he's hugging on Pit. He's snuggling. It's my Pitt. boy. <laughs> I, I, I actually got. Oh. Oh, look at what I got. I, I'm I'm chilling with all the big boys right now. I, I don't think Darcy. they. I don't think they should be. I, I don't know if they can see you because I'm screen sharing. Uh, okay. So, yeah. We got Galacticus. <laughs> Galacticus. We got Apocalypse. You said Galacticus. I love it. Who else we do you got have? Aries. Oh shoot! I got I I got all the bad boys today, dude. Pit. I'm just trying to learn how to do these pictures like my homie right here, Eric Eisner. I'm telling I'm like I'm like this close to submitting a picture and, and then Eric's gonna just be like Schmears. Nah. I didn't know. <laughs> no. Nah. I I learned from the best. Everybody has to start somewhere, Jesse. So so that's it. That's the only advice I'll give you. I'm, you you gotta start you gotta at, out small and then just build your way up. Exactly. And that, that's one thing is I, I always used to look at Instagram and the pictures of people doing editing and stuff like that. And uh, one thing that I love about, you know, my journey in Open Box Mafia and, and stuff like that is, you know, I've, I've been able to watch everybody in the syndicate and stuff like that yeah. and see all the stuff they do. And then to have these guys in our group and hear what they what they're doing and and the types of things they have to do to get these pictures it's it's you know these were a lot of people that are on there and you see like the production of like their diodes and stuff it's like i think we all started out chasing marvel legends and black series right and then you get more mature and then you're like you know what i knew, i want to do something a little bit more for my figures you start buying diodes you start getting into, uh, you might buy people's customs, and then all of a sudden you're like Brock. You start making the customs, right? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and that it's so interesting because uh, what I found when we're looking through those pictures, the the hit, the thing that hit me the most is when you said that when Eric shot, when you saw the lizard and the Spider Man, that made you want to buy the the whole uh, wave because you know what it is? It's art motivates. Uh, some people are motivated with uh, the comic book art. Other people get motivated with articulated comic book art. Uh, it, it, it something to say for for the uh, uh, for the artwork. Uh, well, uh, have you guys ever seen our friend? Uh, he's from the Bay Area. I think he moved down south. His name's uh, Phil Travis or Philip Travis. Eric, have you seen this stuff? Yeah, I know who you're talking. About. I know who you're talking about, Jesse. So he did this picture today where it's uh, Thanos with the gauntlet, and then he has, like, the red eye. All the uh, gems are, like, glowing. He he edited his picture, obviously, but um, yeah. it just looked really cool because he did it to give homage to a comic book cover. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, you're uh, – you, we're, we're kids. I don't know because, you know, obviously there's a lot of younger – collectors out there right that I, I don't know if they collected comic books or whatever but i collected comic books back in 1981 and uh i stopped collecting in 92 so uh that's where i got all my comic book knowledge and stuff was from those days right so when i see these guys doing pictures with these figures that look like the comic book it's like that's that's what's up you know what i mean hey jesse full, full circle Full circle, but, but before you do that, it just uh, I want to I want to settle something in the chat right now. Can you do me a favor and and just do this to your glasses? Can you touch your eyeball? Ow! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's too funny. Okay. 
Nice. <laughs> oh my gosh. And, and, and with that, and with that, Jesse, thank you so much for uh, joining us in Collector Spotlight and uh, helping sure. me highlight Eric. Yes, uh, sir. We're gonna Thanks move for on. Through, Jesse. All right, brother. Love hey, you, bro. Man, love you, man. Hey, this guy right here, hardest guy working on the internet, except for maybe Brock. <laughs> Hey, Jesse, uh, just one more thing. I just want to tell you, it's very important. Don't forget this. All right. Got rid of them. Ah, that's, ah, my <laughs> ears are coming. <laughs> hey, yeah. thanks. Jesse. I wanted to eject them. I had to. <laughs> I ejected them out of here. All right. So. Uh, no, no. It, it, it's, all, it's all good. It was all, all, all pre planned. Now, uh, Eric, so let's talk about. Now you you're doing all these ACs, you know, you're doing ACBA and obviously you're wanting to pick out the the best figures for your ACBA. Like, you know, talking about that horse, you said you can fix the lighting, but I'm sure a different paint job, uh, like I was thinking, man, I you, you could have sprayed it with some matte finish or uh, um now I'm forgetting yeah. the dull coat, some dull coat and it would have completely flanned it out and it would have made the light go differently. But you also want to be using the, you know, the nicer figures, the more posable figures. And I know you have some figures uh, to share with the people. What are what are some of your favorite Marvel Legends? And I have some more screen share to share, screen share to share. Uh, but uh, you have some with you. Let's show the people. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I have I have a few here on the table. I mean, it's uh, uh, nothing special. Just ones that I, I particularly enjoy. Um, I don't have any of the Toy Biz ones out. I don't know if you wanted to talk about those first and kind of build up through Hasbro, or or how you wanted to, how you wanted to do this. Uh, which are the? Can you just name the ones that you have with you, real quick? Sure, I've got a uh, I got Pizza Spidey laying here, um, the uh, Juggernaut Wave Wolverine, okay, uh, Archangel from the Hit Monkey uh, Build a Figure Wave, uh, the new Deadpool from the uh, Sasquatch Build a Figure look, uh, Wave. Okay. The new Mysterio and, uh, and a couple others. All right. Well, then, then let me screen share the uh, just real quick the the ones that you sent me that uh, you liked that you said there they were the ones to have. Let me let me see if I can bring them up real quick, right over here. Okay. Tell me when you see the screen. There we go. So rest in peace to my Nightcrawler. Uh, yeah, that's probably one of my. Favorite Toy Biz Legends, and possibly my possibly my favorite. Um, I just took, I just was going through my X Men uh, tote a few days ago and took poor Nightcrawler out and went to work the the thigh swivel mm -hmm. on his uh, on his right leg and it just it it didn't snap. It's almost like it was just barely together. It came it just came off. Now, so um, that sometimes yeah. happens to the older figures, especially you know the the, pla the plastic could you know maybe the plastic got brittle on you, or maybe the paint got stuck, and then you when you twisted it, but you you didn't twist it that hard, right? No, 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 and I, and I'm not going to dwell on that. Um, I'm, this is a great figure though. He's got right. a he's got a diaphragm joint and an ab crunch and a waist joint. So he's he's got three joints um, in his upper body, and He's got. He's going to have uh, double jointed knees, um, ball jointed hips. He's just super poseable. Anybody that's got this figure knows. Yeah, phenomenal uh, figure. The posability is is phenomenal. Um, the 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 tail is on a has a wire, so you can bend the tail and it'll stay posed. Right. The feet, the feet, the toes, and the uh, the fingers are are posable, and that paint. Uh, and likeness on the face. I love the little bit of blue in the hair. I think mm -hmm. they mean. I think they went a little heavy on the blue in his hair, uh, but I love the tone of the uh, of his face and, and the the color of his eyes. It's just one of my favorite, uh, probably my favorite Toy Biz uh, Marvel Legend. Right. And I'm currently in the mar I'm currently in the markets get another one, and uh, I'm still going to try to get the one that I broke uh, repaired. It's right. one that I think has. Hasbro have a hard time topping this one, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they. I don't, I don't think they can uh, because number one, they don't do the toe articulations anymore. Right. And we, right. we are wondering in the chat uh, if you guys uh, you go ahead and, and start throwing out some things here. There's a bunch of people in the chat. They're saying that this is one of their 
favorite uh, Marvel Legends uh, of all time, or at least in the in the twenty dollar uh, range of uh, of figures. Uh, so Eric, what I'll do is I'll just start popping the figures, and you just go ahead and start um, talking about them, what you like about them, and then I'll look at the chat and 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 read what uh, some of these people said. And I did pick the pic this picture in particular here. I, at any time that I get a chance to highlight Glenn Webb, because when I first got into collecting uh, several years ago, he was one of the he was the guy I would watch. He was the guy I watched for reviews, and he was the guy I watched for customs. And he definitely yeah. influenced uh, the way I even looked at figures and thought about figures. So so enjoyable to watch, and he's definitely absolutely a absolutely. absolutely rest in peace, uh, Glenn Webb. And if I'm not mistaken, Brock, he wasn't. Uh, he was. He's in our uh, age range as well. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, he, he was born in 1976. Huh? Uh, okay, yeah. so who, so we actually have a uh, a year, on, or I have a year on him, anyways. Or had a year on him. Rest in peace. Yeah, he was. Uh, he was one of my favorite uh, YouTubers. One of the first actual YouTubers I watched that um, did the. He didn't do hunts a lot, but he would do hunts. Right. And of course, the reviews and the customization. So he was. Uh, he sorely missed. Uh, Glenn yeah, Webb. he he influenced uh, uh, definitely a lot of people in this community. And this is what the pa original packaging looked like. I mean, come on, man, it's just awesome. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, you got a you got a comic book uh, that had a key uh, yeah. appearance, the Nightcrawler, and uh, you got a big bath piece. This is when they had the big baths. Uh, that was the Galactus. I actually bought this whole wave uh, mock, opened them, and completed my Galactus. Most of the Toy Biz baths that I have, um, I just bought complete, and I've actually only got a couple of the big ones. The only two I have are Galactus and uh, Giant Man. I don't have Apocalypse or a Sentinel, which I need. I need about three Sentinels, and I'll oh, probably yeah. eventually get that Apocalypse. But, um, yeah. but yeah, Toy Biz, uh, they for what they right. were doing at the time, yeah, uh, yeah that, pose, that pose is sick right there. Yeah, I like it's, that. It's ridiculous that the, the posing that this guy can do. I mean, the ang look, look, how, look at the angle here. It's complete uh, by the ankle. It is right, right. More yeah, than it's just a, an ankle pivot there. It's a ninety. De yeah, it's a ninety degree upward bend on, on the foot. Yeah. It, it's a it's a magnificent figure, man. I, I I love this figure too. One of my my favorite ones. So this is another one that you mentioned. I think this is the right one. Yep, yep. That's the gambit. Um, it seems like all of my favorite all of my favorite toy biz appear to be to be be X Men. Uh, I bought him around the same time, I guess. This has been a few years back. I don't have a particularly lo uh, large amount of, uh, of Toy Biz, but the ones that I have um, are ones that I consider to be good because I I wasn't collecting when uh, when these were actually on shelves. Like I told you, it was about 2012, 2013 when, when I got into it. But, um, again, the posability on him is, is nice. Um, I like the deco of... Of the costume the boots look nice uh the paint apps look look pretty good on him as well um the uh it comes of course this was uh when they were putting bases with the figures so there was no build a figure part you got the uh, sentinel yeah. arm lower arm and hand uh for a base yeah that base you got is the awesome nice uh, yep yep and i've still got that somewhere i've got a few of those i've got that one i've got the Iceman one where he's uh uh, riding up onto the the ice bridge and it's on a it's on a sentinel piece as well um the effects uh with the cards are cool and i've always had trouble with his staff uh, the staff that i have of his it's been broke uh, a couple times and it always stays warped i've had it glued back together a couple times but i right. i need to find uh, i need to find something to use as a makeshift staff for him that that's not going to break and that's going to stay perfectly straight It'd be like a metal, um, but other uh, like a metal that, chopstick. Yeah, that would probably work well. And the coat um, is is pretty awesome uh, for the time uh, that this was made. It has a wire in the uh, the loop of the coat, so you can kind of pose that uh, around however you would like. And uh, I've actually seen people use this coat on on multiple different figures. Uh, a multiple man. 
I know wore a brown coat like that. And yeah. at one point I've seen, I've seen people take pictures and of multiple the, man's uh, multiple coming back out. He, he's going to be released uh, now. It, it'd be pretty cool to have the cloth cape. Plastic says that he, uh, he gave his icons death stroke staff to Gambit. Oh yeah. Well, that would be a good idea. I never even, uh, I never even thought of that. Uh, that's one uh, figure I don't have. I've only got a couple DC icons, but um, yeah, anything like that um, from another figure uh, that would work would, would be good. But I'm kind of thinking, trying to think of something that, that I could like repurpose, like you said, like a like a piece of metal or or a, a thin dowel rod or something would would probably work good. Yeah. Here we go. I, this is one of my favorite ones. Yep, mine as well. Mine as well. Um, for the size, for the size of this figure, uh, the posability, again, it's not quite the range of Nightcrawler, but this figure is three or four times as big as Nightcrawler. Yeah. Uh, the only, the only thing I don't like about this figure is that I wish he had, um, like a torso articulation or right. some type of ab articulation because the chest is. The chest is a block, uh, but the rest of the figure is is highly articulated, and the sculpting and paint, again on this on this version of Beast is is nice. He's got an articulated jaw. Yeah, he comes neat. with the uh, he comes with the little, um, I guess like the a danger room type or or a training uh, prop, you know, that he can get up on and and kind of get loose on, like acrobatic on or whatnot. And uh, again, another another solid figure uh, from Toy Biz. I'd probably put the three that you've shown as, as the top uh, and the top few that I own. I probably only own fifteen or twenty Toy Biz figures. And uh, as as it is with Hasbro now, it seems like as they as they keep uh, updating these older Toy Biz figures and even older uh, Hasbro figures, a lot of these uh, a lot of these older figures are, are kind of getting replaced. But the three figures that you've shown, the Beast, and especially the Beast and the Nightcrawler, I'm, I'm thinking Hasbro is going to have a hard time uh, beating. The, the yeah, it, they, they may have a shot with the Gambit, but, but these other two, I, I'm not so sure about. I, I know. I, I love this Beast. It's so poseable. Like, you know, that one, the, the handstand here, it, you can pull this off, and it, this figure will hold that pose. It, it's, it, there's no tricks in that one. But you know what I've seen people do? is they, they've used the Sasquatch, uh, they use parts of Sasquatch, the Toy Biz Sasquatch, and give it, because that one has a, a an app crunch, and they've mixed it with this, and, uh, you know, obviously repainted the figure, uh, and right. it looks pretty awesome. Yeah, I've never had the, uh, the uh, Sasquatch from Toy Biz, or the, uh, I think there was a, a Wendigo, I, I've not, I've never owned either one of those, but I think, like you said, I think they do have some type of uh, torso articulation. Yeah. So obviously, this is not the Colossus you were talking about, correct? This is the Colossus you were uh, talking correct. about. Correct. Well, yep. Yep. It was this one. Although I do like the newer uh, Legends Colossus, I just wish they would have used this uh, this uh, deco for the costume. And yeah, I'm sure that I'm sure they're going to get to that. I think this is a newer, uh, maybe astonishing. Right version, yeah. I'm not, sure from, what, I'm not sure what from what comic book it is. Uh, I do I like the beard better on this suit. But anyways, getting back to to this guy right here. Yeah, uh, yeah. I like the bearded look too. Um, yeah, this is the classic. The classic uh, look. I'm not sure if that's Jim Lee. You might be able to. Uh, you might be able to uh, inform me on that. But I know it is is the more classic look. Um, not quite as much of a sheen he has more of a wash uh to his arms and legs than than the uh than the newer hasbro or the select i've got the select also in this costume which it is a little bit uh on the tall side to really to scale with legends a lot of the larger marvel selects uh scale pretty well with six inch figures but the colossus seems to be just a little bit too tall um but this one has good articulation um like I said, I like the deco. Uh, the head sculpt looks really nice. Uh, you know, the thing, the uh, the hands, and it's got a toe. It's got a toe hinge. Right. So if if it's uh, if it's loaded down with articulation and the sculpt is nice and the paint is 
is you know serviceable, then then they'll get my money because I'm I'm more into the articulation uh, than anything. Although you know, sculpt and paint it is also needs to be to be there if it has the articulation. Uh, and it's something I want. I, I, I'm going to bite. You know, I really like this figure, but I think it can definitely use an update. And, and I think we have a pretty decent one uh, with that previous Colossus. I'm just hoping that, like, as you said, that they will release them in classic colors. One of the things that this figure suffered from, and I don't know, maybe it was just uh, the, you know, I've, I think I've owned two or three uh, since I've been collecting, is the ab crunch. It, it, it doesn't... Um, uh, there's a like a loose part in it and it won't stay up. Yeah. It, it's usually uh, yeah. like hunched over. Has that happened to you too? Yeah, yeah. I've only owned one, and it, and it, the abs definitely get loose. Also, the um, the thigh swivel on on mine. One of the thighs is not super loose, but it's so loose that it's kind of hard to hold certain poses. Right. Uh, so uh, maybe the uh, I could use some pledge the uh, yeah. the floor cleaner or something on that and maybe tighten it up a little bit, but um, definitely the abs the ab crunch gets a little floppy on that one kind of fast. Also, he's a little short in yes. my opinion, right? For Colossus, I mean he's he's bigger. He's probably six and a half inches or maybe between six and a half and seven. But I think he should be a solid, maybe seven inches, maybe slightly over seven inches, yeah, a little bit to more be imposing. scaled a little better. Right. Yeah, to be scaled a, a little more accurate for Colossus. And I think this, this guy one right a little here, too short. Yeah, where this where this guy is is got an appropriate height to him in bulk. I think, yeah, I think that's a perfect build uh, for Colossus, and yeah, I'm right. almost positive. We, I'm almost positive we'll get a a, a redeco of this mold with the uh, with the classic one at some point. I can't see uh, Hasbro and, and their their need to constantly you know stick us for money, not taking advantage of that. Here's one of my favorite figures, for sure. This is really nice. Yep. Yep. My favorite toy is Captain America and possibly my favorite Captain America, uh, period. Um, I don't think that Hasbro has given us a definitive uh, Captain America, although they've tried uh, several times. Um, the, uh, I think we were talking the other day, uh, the, uh, the, the Cap Wolf is probably their best uh, version that they've given us, but I still don't think that's, um, you know, as good as the face off. Um, I yeah, actually, one, I actually, one of the things that I like about the face off is the, the, the head sculpt, the head sculpt is so money. It looks super heroic. It looks like what I want Captain America to look like he is, he is a little bit on the roided outside, uh, for cap. I don't see cap being this like super humongous, uh, like, yeah. almost like a Hulk, uh, but yeah, he's a little bit yoked. Yeah. He's, he's, yeah, he's uh, super yoked. Um, and, but, but he does have th those articulation points, except, you know, one of the things, man, if they could produce a figure like that, I, I know they're most likely not going to give us tour articulation, but guess what? If putting in tour articulation in a figure is actually pretty easy to do. Uh, what this one doesn't have, uh, is the, um, ankle pivot, right? I don't think it has an ankle pivot. If it, I'm not thinking it does, Bob. No, yeah. no, no. It's a toy. It's toy biz. The toy biz ankle rocker was slightly different, and so uh, the figures that that did have it, most of them, like the night, it's almost like a hinge where it'll just go side to side. But I don't think this one had it. I think it's just got the toe articulation and then the up and down hinge. Um, to get back to what to get back to what you were talking about, uh, the paint and the sculpting, though the wrinkles in the pants, yeah, uh, the the, nice. the, scale, the scale mail on the upper uh, the upper part of the costume, yep, and the the raised uh, star uh, sculpted star on the upper part of the costume, and uh, this is what I think of when I think of uh, classic cap. You got the you got the pirate boots, you got the uh, the the gloves with the, uh, the almost the gauntlet type. Uh, sleeve on the gloves and you got the scale mail and you got the uh the cowl with the wings as opposed to a helmet right 
And this body mold, you know, they uh, Toy Biz, and, you know, it wasn't just Hasbro uh, reusing the the body molds. They used the well, not that's not the picture I wanted to show you, but the, but but here's to your point. Like you compare Bucky Cap, which is a cool figure, right? It, it kind of set the standard for a long time with that that mold in particular. But when you compare, I mean look at the scale mail like what you were saying look at the sculpting on this face off captain america and the star compared to yep. just you know just the straight on paint but uh you know so they they repeated in the ultimate cap and then the uh, classic captain america right here they they reused the the body and just painted a little bit different gave it a different head sculpt the head sculpt is you know, at least in my opinion it's not as nice as that one but it's but it's cool and then, uh, oh, that's my, my yeah. one. Yeah, they did change it up, though. They could have, they probably could have cheaped out. So I at least give them props for for altering it and making the uh, the mask uh, different enough to where you can tell that it's different. And uh, they went more uh, more like the fatigue style boots and gloves, right. like like Ultimate Cap should have. Uh, the hands weren't super great uh it, it was too like almost too flat and they did the the hinge here but yep. i just i i love these figures man i they, they look so nice on a shelf uh one of the other figures yeah. you didn't really mention but this one i i for whatever reason i love this this is one of my favorite toy biz figures one of my favorite hulks that they've is put that, out uh, is that first appearance hulk yep. i think yep and they made a uh, they did they made a gray version too. That was the variant. That, that's the one that I had. I had the gray version. Uh, I can't remember if it was uh, Galactus or I know I want to say I can't. I, I had yeah, it was Galactus. I was gonna yeah. say I bought that figure for a bath, and Galactus is the only bath that, from Toy Biz that I completed I by think buying. I can show you the gray so. one here in a second. Here I'll just bring up. Uh, let me see if I can bring him. Yep. Up. Yep. I mean, I think they're exactly the same, other than the exactly color of the same. skin or the paint. Yeah, I just, I, I, I don't know what it is. I, I kind of like the Frankenstein look because you know it's the first appearance Hulk. This one's the the Gray Hulk. I like the green. I, I like the, I prefer the green one, but I like the sculpt on this figure. Uh, they're not super poseable because of the way they did the waist. Uh, they don't have an app. Yeah, the waist, the waist is almost like a weird waist swivel, and it's up above. It's like a above the uh it's like around the lower abdomen yeah if right. i remember right yeah that, that's exactly what it is uh i love this figure i think another one that you didn't really mention and this one's kind of controversial uh only because uh i i love the sculpt look at he's a freaking beast yeah oh Just yeah yeah and this is one of the this is one of the few ones that i actually really like that i've i've never owned and i think it's uh it's a super nice figure Tons yeah. of sculpt work, tons yeah. of sculpt, tons of paint. Uh, I can't speak on the articulation, but for a bigger character, uh, from from what I've seen and what I can even just tell from looking at the picture, knowing what to look for, uh, it looks like it has uh, uh, somewhat of an ab crunch. All of the other points are there, um, possibly a waist swivel as well. So yeah, it's it's a super nice looking fi super nice looking figure that. Um, you know, people's excited about the new Hasbro when they showed at, at Toy Fair, but uh, it's it's not it's not competing with this one. Not even close. Uh, what this one suffers from is uh, ability to stand. Uh, right out of the box, I had to put Pledge Floor Shine on the on the boot area because he's top. I mean, look at him. Uh, he works his legs. Yeah. But his upper body is heavy, super heavy. Yeah. And yeah, uh, he's a brute. He's, he's a brute. Upper body is, is huge. As you notice, all these pictures, they're all in vanilla poses there. I don't think any I couldn't find a, a bishop in a uh, dynamic pose because he's hard to pose. So that's the right, one. Complaint. Right. Yeah. If you, Go ahead, Eric. Yeah. A lot of times if, if, you got, if, if they have a heavy upper body, um, it's going to be it's going to be hard to uh, to get them in much of a pose um without support i mean i'm not saying it's not possible it's definitely possible but um if you if you're not finding any any hyper posed pictures of, of the guy then you know there's a reason for you it no i have him i have him in my detolf pose but i kind of have him leaning up against the glass a little bit so i'm cheating it's not he would be difficult to use an acba uh 
other than yeah. you know just vanilla a, pose. a vanilla pose or looming over someone uh you have to hit him heavy with the, the pledge floor shine because those ankles they're he's got you know his ankles are teeny 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 for that for that yeah. entire body it's a yeah. great figure. I don't think the new one, I mean, without having it in hand, is not fair to completely say, but just looking at the sculpt work, uh, Hasbro doesn't do the same type of sculpt work that, uh, no. that Toy Biz did. It's just, it's different. Um, um, they just have yeah, absolutely. Way to go business. absolutely. Yeah, it's night and day different. I love the Hasbro figures, but the sculpt and the paint work that Toy Biz was giving us, is it's still unmatched. And and here's an example. This is one of your favorite figures. This is a phenomenal figure. Uh, I like this figure. It's on the Bucky Cap body, and right. uh, but you notice that there's no sculpting. Everything's painted. Well, I shouldn't say it, nothing's sculpted because the head has a little bit of sculpting. The you know the mask. Yeah. But but, the, but you're going to get that on every head sculpt. Almost every head sculpt is going to be unique. So that's a good point. So aside from the head sculpt, yeah, the only. Uh, the the budget on this figure was the wings, and maybe that uh, metallic purple paint. Right, and just going back, guy uh, Eric, uh, the guys they're talking about the Hulk. Uh, that uh, they should make that fourteen inch Hulk that came out, which actually looks pretty darn good, pretty articulate. Oh yeah, too. yeah. And I, I've not had that figure in hand, but from everything that I've seen of, of that. Of uh, the uh, the well the twelve fourteen inch I guess the twelve inch scale Hulk, mm -hmm. uh, man that figure looks phenomenal. I think he comes with um, if I'm not mistaken he comes with a, doesn't he come with a couple head sculpts possibly. I know. Uh, uh, well, I can't I can't say for sure. Um, yeah, I can't say either. Re regardless, I've seen enough. Uh, it's it's um, sculpted really well, and I don't know if Legends could actually size it down to, to a, a one twelve scale. But if they could, they'd definitely be on to something there because a lot of the uh, a lot of the Hulk fig figures they've given us, uh, as far as Hasbro goes, um, the uh, the face off one is probably best, but that's Toy Biz, and it that thing right. doesn't have torso articulation. It doesn't have torso articulation either. It's a block, kind of like Beast. Right. And uh, the Gladiator Hulk, the Gladiator Hulk build a figure is on a pretty good base, but I think it yes. could be a little bit taller. Yeah, I agreed. Yeah, I, I was. Uh, I got it in a trade. Uh, speaking of that, uh, build a figure. If that would have been just a little bit bigger, because it's a nice looking figure, I wasn't gonna get it. Uh, but I, I, you know, I was. I was able to get it in a in a trade that I made, and it is yeah. a nice, nice looking figure. It would have been great if it was maybe like a half inch bigger. Or, yeah, because I think uh, it's bulky. It's super bulky, but like yeah. you said, it just needs a little bit more height. It just needs a little bit more height than I think they would they would have nailed uh, the proportions a little bit better if they did just give it a, a half inch to three quarters inch more height. Right. So let's get back to this arc uh, archangel that you like. Uh, Caesar says the color is magenta. I think that's what he said. Magenta. Yeah, that's probably right. Yeah. Um, and I actually prefer the uh, the SDCC X Force version. Uh, but the only problem with that figure is the the wings, for whatever let's see, reason. Let's see if um, I can find that one real quick. Let me back out. Yeah, they're, they're, this was a good uh, website, by the way. This was a really good. Yeah, they're list. a lot looser. They're a lot looser um, out of the package uh, than the joints on the wings of the uh, single carded figure. There it is. And I'm not sure if that's due to the silver paint or the chrome paint. Or what exactly it is, but I know that that's a common problem with that figure, and uh, mine is actually pretty loose in a couple of the joints of the actual body as well. And I haven't really done much with that figure. I mean, I had it displayed, I had it displayed in a setup for about a year or maybe uh, a year and a half, and then I took it and a bunch of other figures down and have had them put away. So. And I haven't used them a lot as far as ACBA or, or anything like that. They, they do, he just comes a lot more loose as far as the joints go right out of the package. As far as the look goes, the look of the figure is, is outstanding. You get the silver paint and you get the silver uh, uh, chrome colored wings on the figure. So as far as the appearance goes, uh, I like it better. 
but uh, it's just it's just the joints are a little bit more loose on that X Force version for for whatever reason. Yeah, and 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 that could just be depending on how that hinge works. You can you could probably add some pledge. Pledge is, is the uh, collector's friend. Uh, I've used right. it for so many right. different right. things. It will definitely tighten things up. And if if it depends yeah, on how that hinge works. Yeah, the, yeah, the the wings just kind of peg into that hinge just with little nubs. So I'm sure if you used a little bit of pledge on it, it might add a little bit more surface area to those little nubs that go into the upper and bottom part of that hinge, and it might tighten it up some. Right. And let me see the last. And so I think you have this on hand. So let me stop. Let me see this one right here. I just wanted to show you a picture, but since you have it, let me uh, let me stop sharing, and then we can talk about the the. The more recent Marvel Legends, and we can definitely interact with the the chat. Let me bring let me bring this back up. They really, uh, I think the the Hulk struck a nerve because who doesn't want a Hulk figure in their collection? And man, that Gladiator Hulk is pretty nice. I wish they would have came out with like like a screaming or a grimacing face. How do, how can you just have a Hulk looking like this? Yeah, that's you know? that was another. Yeah, that was my number one knock on that figure, aside from the size is um the expression you got to give the hulk some type of an emotive head sculpt i mean it's the hulk it, just to have him uh standing there blah you know bland and listless uh doesn't make a lot of sense to me um but uh but yeah that as far as the height and, and the the head sculpt those are probably my two uh, biggest gripes with that builder figure and the third gripe would be that it's a movie figure, and I'm just not crazy about movie figures like that. I mean, I prefer it to be a comic version of Hulk, whether it be classic or, or modern or, or whichever. But, you know, it is what it is. All right, so show us, uh, show us these new figures or the, from the newer generation of Marvel Legends, uh, because I think, obviously, we missed – uh, quite a bit of figures. We don't have time to go over, uh, you know, all the, the 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 phenomenal figures that Toy Biz put out. Obviously, you know, you have the yeah. bigger figures that we didn't talk about, like the Sentinel, like Giant Man, uh, like Foom, you know, etc. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, so we're okay, talking about yeah. single individual figures. When you when you talk about, I'm I'm going to bring you up, and you have the floor. Go ahead and talk about those two that you have there, or three. Yeah, I've got a. I've just got a couple here, um, and I'm not going to get into a lot of, uh, you know, go into great detail about them. But this Wolverine is, is my favorite Marvel legend. He's not my favorite Marvel character, but this figure was my figure of the year. Um, it was 2016, mm -hmm. and so this was my figure of the year for that year. Period. Not Marvel Legends. My my figure of the year. Wow. for that year what was this wolverine and um i just think they nailed i just think they nailed the size for him i mean he's only probably maybe five and a half inches tall at the most maybe just slightly over five um of course he's got the butterfly joints which if you give a figure butterfly joints i'm already going to be you know I'm, I'm i'm sold right there so being that it's wolverine a new sculpt um, butterfly joints and it's just the overall look of him. I mean, yep. I mean, I I, I'm so uh, they could have improved on that figure if maybe they would have given him an extra head sculpt again, like I mentioned, the or, grim singing or a screaming head sculpt. Yeah, the head, the head sculpt is, is, uh, way too bland. I, I agree. Um, I'd actually bought one off the secondary market. Not that a person should have to do that, but I mean, as, as you're aware, that that is an option. So, so of course the uh, let me see if I can find the camera. The original head. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. It's just plain uh, stern. You know, no real uh, expression to it. Um, the one I've actually got on here. Yeah. I got from, nice. Uh, I got that from Henry Beltron, and it is a little bit more of a grimace. It has a little bit of expression to it. So, you know, I actually prefer that one, you know, more, obviously, because to be posing, if I've got Wolverine just standing there in a vanilla pose around uh, some of the X-Men or whatnot, then this uh, this plain stern head might be all right. 
Now, was, that, was that Henry or Adrian Beltran that did that? Uh, Adrian, you're right, Adrian. I get them confused. Adrian does the head sculpts and Henry does the dioramas. Right. Yeah, I was actually, so was I, I spoke to Henry a little bit uh, earlier today. I think he'll be, uh, he'll be coming on uh, sometime uh, later, maybe in a couple months. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. I actually yeah. have a diorama from Henry that is in route to me right now, uh, uh, an alleyway, alleyway diorama. And I will show that off. Uh, I might do a live stream on Open Box Mafia when I get that cool. and kind of go over that a little bit. But yeah, he's uh, he seems like a great guy. He does. He's in the ACBA group as well. Uh, good artist, very creative, uh, diverse, creates dioramas. And then his brother, uh, I think his brother actually sculpted his head sculpt, if I'm not mistaken, and did the paint. And you guys probably aren't going to be able to see this too well. Uh, I know Brock, you've seen it. Yeah, the, uh, nice the sculptor shelf, it, yeah. uh, the uh, the May shelf uh, head sculpt. This was painted by this was painted by Adrian as well, and uh, the sculpt is phenomenal, and the paint job is almost just as good. It's the uh, Logan uh, head sculpt with a cigar. How much uh, did that cost? Was that fifty dollars? Was that the one that cost fifty bucks? Fifty dollars shipped. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. The um, sculpt is uh, phenomenal on that thing, and Adrian does a really good job uh, in paint, for sure. Yep, yep. He did great. He had a. He actually had two. Uh, the sculptor shelf has, a, as far as I know, he has four sculpts out uh, that he has sold. One is a Doctor Strange, uh, with a kind of maniacal uh, look yeah. on his face. Uh, he has an unmasked uh, Wade Wilson Deadpool. Yeah, that one looks. Uh, really head good. that you can yeah. build. Yeah. Yep, and he has a. And the last one I think that I've seen that he has is an old man Logan, uh, head sculpt. Which, Adrian tried to get me to bite on the other two as well, but at that kind of cash. <laughs> I was like, well, maybe if you can make it a package deal, we can have have a deal here, and he was willing to go down like five or ten bucks, but that was about all I was going to get. So I had to pay for head. He does phenomenal work, though. I couldn't pass up on the on the uh, Logan head, though. I wanted a good, um, a nice uh, unmasked Logan head. I think the one that comes with the uh, retro card figure is serviceable. Yeah. But I don't really care for it. Compared to, this, to, to these, yeah. Well, it's like I said, it's passable, but it's it's pretty bland and, and expressionless, and it's kind of it's kind of a soft sculpt as well. Well, Eric, let me let me move us on because we're uh, we we got twenty seven viewers and we appreciate you guys hanging out with us, but we don't want to lose start losing you guys. Good. And um, good, let me let me move on to the rapid round since we've we've talked a lot of figures, which is great. I love man, I could I I could do this for a few more hours just talking figures, but uh, Saturday morning starts no Sunday morning starts Saturday night. So let let me get to the rapid round. This is where I ask my guests. I'm going to bring you up on screen, Eric, and I'm going to ask you a question, and you have to give me the answer, uh, the first one that comes to your mind. I know you've seen it done. Are you ready, let's, Playa? Let's do it. Marvel or DC? Uh, Marvel, 100%. Wolverine or Magneto? Uh, Wolverine. I have here Holy Something or Captain America. Oh, you know what it was? Broly or Captain America? Uh, Captain America. Justice League <laughs> or the Wrecking Crew? Uh, wrecking Crew. Trout or Bass? Come again. Trout or Bass? Ooh. That's a tough one, bro. Uh, Come on, man. I'm going to say, I'm gonna gonna say Trout. Okay. I'm going to say Trout. Trout. Do you fold or do you hang your T-shirts? Uh... I hang most of them, but I do fold some. In sync or Bell Biv DeVoe? Oh, Bell Biv DeVoe. <laughs> yeah, right. Figures. Absolutely. <laughs> ACBA in the sun or in the snow? I'm going to say the snow, but that caught me like a two week 
flu this past year. So yeah. it's, that's why I bring it up. That's why I wanted to ask you that question. This guy, yeah, yeah. this guy goes to get a, an ACBA shot when it was 20 degrees outside. Is that, that's what I remember you telling me. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to do some shots on the beach like George does, but uh, you know, here where I live, it's, you got to drive like six, seven hours to get to the closest beach. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to do that. Yeah. West Virginia is a little bit different than Hawaii for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we're inland for sure. <laughs> hey, so Eric in the, in the toy community, I ask all my guests this, uh, what do you want to be known for? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, I'm not in this to be known, you know, I just, uh, I just want to be somebody that people can say that is relatable and helpful and you know hopefully with the uh with the open box shots in, in open box mafia i mean if i can inspire some people to maybe pick up the hobby and and get posing their figures and and you know trying to take pictures uh like say for example jeff roach is doing uh, Todd Taylor, uh, you know, I'm not going to sit here and name off a bunch of people, but just to name a couple people, uh, you know, that, that, um, that makes me feel good that, that, uh, maybe I can assist some people, uh, in heading down that road a little bit. So, so, you know, if, if anything, it's just to, to be helpful and inspiring to people. Well, I definitely, uh, think that, uh, you're right on track with that. I, People definitely appreciate you because you are a helpful uh, guy and you're an active member of the nerd toy community and you don't have you don't bring drama to the table. You know, some people just always uh, surrounded by drama, bring people down, talk trash. I, I've never seen you uh, do that. Not that you're a perfect person, but you're definitely an, a, a, an addition, a, a benefit to the nerd community. So this is my final question to you before I turn it over to the chat. Is there anything that you wanted to get off your chest that I didn't ask you? Uh, here's an opportunity. Uh, otherwise, we'll just move it to the chat, and I'll start reading you off the questions. Let's see. Uh, and I appreciate that, by the way, Brock. Um, not particularly that I can think of. Um, one minor thing would be everybody that's, uh, everybody that's not in uh, Open Box Mafia, you need to go check out that group on Facebook. It's Open Box Mafia, one word. And for the people that's in the group, go up to the top of the screen on Facebook and go to the magnifying glass icon where the search bar is. Type in hashtag Open Box Shots, one word. Click on that and click on the uh, the most recent content that started tonight. Scroll down through the pictures and vote on the ones you like. It'll help a lot. Very good. So uh, the, one of the things, uh, Eric does have an Instagram, and he, it's, it's at 112 Shooter. I've uh, I put it in the, in the chat, but it's also going to be in the video description. So now uh, we're turning it over. It looks like we have, Eric, we have about 25 people uh, still in the chat, which is great. And uh, let's, let's ask some questions. If you guys could please do me a favor and put question in caps. That way I don't miss it. I tend to miss questions. Uh, don't get upset with me. Just repeat them. Copy and paste. <laughs> Sounds good, Brock. So I'm still, and, and there's a, I think we have a little bit of a delay, uh, probably like a 10 second delay. Yep. It's about a 10 second delay. That's so cool, we're waiting buddy. for the questions. And maybe we got some slow typers in the chat. Oh, uh, Eric, uh, one of the things that we didn't talk about is uh, you're going to be entering a contest here coming up pretty soon, right? I am, and I'm starting to get stressed a little bit about it because I'm having trouble with ideas. Uh, maybe people in the chat can help me with some ideas uh, for a pairing that I can use for this shot. Um, it is a, a paid entry uh, photo contest in articulated comic book art it's called photo combat round three it's the third uh the third annual year for photo combat and the first round uh the theme for the first round is sidekick save so basically what it is is you need to get a team up or a pairing of characters uh basically a side uh, assisting or saving the hero, sort of like Robin saving Batman, or you know, 
yada, 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 Bucky saving cap. But what I'm really looking for is I'm trying to think up of some lesser uh, known or more creative uh, pairings uh, to help me with the creativity score of, of, the, uh, of the judging. And the only thing I've got so far is Shuri and Black Panther and Claw. And me and uh, Derek Burton have talked about it a little bit. He's given me some some ideas, and, and I've got some other ideas out there too. But I need to start grinding on this pick this coming week, which uh, hopefully I'm moved back into my house by then. But if not, I'm just going to have to set everything up here and do it as, as I have been doing it. But um, So, yeah, I think I have the 25th of March to get my entry in, and which needs to be my main shot, a, a B-side shot, which is basically uh, – my picture from another angle and then the seaside shot, which uh, like Jesse uh, Chavez was talking about, that's uh, where you're pulled back and up from above your display where you can see the lights and how everything is set up back away from the table. So you have to have all three of those uh, submitted uh, to the, uh, the email address by the 25th of March, which I think is not this coming Friday, but the Friday or Saturday after that. All right, so you heard him. If you have any ideas for him, make sure you PM him on Facebook or just contact him on Open Box Mafia. The first question comes from Caesar. When did you start collecting? When did I start collecting? The way I collect now, um, 2012. I've had figures my whole life, though. I mean, like I told you earlier, as as a as a child, I had a. Uh, the, uh, the vintage Star Wars from A New Hope all the way up through uh, Return of the Jedi, so all three movies. Uh, but I wasn't really collecting them. Those were just basically gifts that I, you know, that I amassed a large, you know, decent amount of all the way through the, the G.I. Joe and the, uh, the tra G1 Transformers. But I actually got into collecting heavily around 2012, 2013. Uh, whenever the uh, Ironmonger Marvel Legends wave was, I'm thinking that's 2012, but I could be wrong. Jesse asked, uh, what are the next few figs or wave on your hit list? The next few figs or waves on my hit list? Um, hmm. Well, I, I guess I'm going to complete that Thanos bath eventually, even though I don't care about movie <laughs> figures. And I don't care about that figure in particular. I just have uh, a thing for completing uh, Legends waves. I actually saw um, the Proxima Midnight and the King Cobra today, and they had the bath pieces swapped out, or I would have bought those two figures. That's the first time that I'd ever seen a, a swap at any of my stores around here. So mm. I guess that and... I can't think of anything else off the top of my head. I've got the Deadpool and Lizard Wave, so I'm pretty caught up on most everything other than some odds and ends. What's your favorite legend? Uh, that's from Nightwalker. Uh, my favorite legend is uh, the Wolverine. Juggernaut uh, Wave Wolverine. Yeah, that's a really nice figure. Oh, that already got lost in the in the questions here. My thing scrolls up too fast. Let me see if I can back it up. Back it up. Back this it new Deadpool is nice. I like for that a, one. For a current get it. A current figure, this is probably my favorite uh, figure that's uh, out recently. Eric, the cable's what was nice your too. first custom with Marvel Legends from Troy Roach? Do you, have a, you own a custom? I don't own any customs. The closest thing I own to a custom is a kit bash which I couldn't do because it was on a, uh, it's on a Mattel body. It's on a suited Mattel body before the uh, Colson came out, the Marvel, excuse me, the Marvel legends agent Colson come out with the suited body for Hasbro. The only way to get a suited body was to use a, a Mattel figure. So I have a um, Alfred Pennyworth from the movie masters, the dark Knight, or it's either dark Knight or dark Knight uh, rises movie masters. And I had a buddy to put on the uh, unmasked uh, Norman Osborn head from the Toy Biz uh, Marvel Legend Green Goblin, the unmasked Green Goblin. That's the only custom that I can think of that I own, and that's not even a custom. I just had to have somebody put that head on for me. So it's Hi. a suited, uh, suited, 
suited Nor Norman Osborne. Jaime asks, what's your favorite horror fig? Uh, horror fig. My favorite horror fig right now is probably the ultimate leather face from NECA. Do you see yourself taking and collect, uh, probably talking and collecting figs when you're 90 years old from Caesar? Uh, hopefully if I live that long, I will, yeah, I'll <laughs> still be collecting. Yeah. How big uh, do you think your collection since you're a completionist will be by that time? <laughs> yeah, I'll have to be, yeah, I'll need a couple storage units or, or a big garage or, or something. Oh, this is something. I'm glad you brought this up, Cody. Uh, uh, Jesse was supposed to be at a Toys R Us today uh, doing a bit, his bit from there. So we could segue into talking about Toys R Us closing. So Cody asks, what's your feeling as Toys R Us is closing being a collector than losing the rights to their exclusives? Good question. Good question. Um, it's bittersweet, I guess, uh, from a nostalgia point of view for me more so than anything, because I buy the majority of the figures that I buy, I order uh, online and some of the stuff I'll fill in through um, like collectors from California, like, like Bryant. Uh, he'll hook me up with uh, stuff as, as it comes out. But um yeah, yeah, it sucks. Um, I don't know what they're going to do to fill the gap with the Toys R Us exclusives. I guess they will just, um, uh, you know, ration them out to uh, GameStop, Target, and uh, and Walmart, and maybe even, you know, add a like Best another, Buy. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I think uh, Best Buy is carrying figures now too. Yeah, yeah. So somebody else, somebody else that's not even a really a, in the game as far as the exclusives go may get the uh, Toys R Us exclusives, but, uh, but yeah, it, it's bittersweet. I mean, that's the only real uh, toy store that you can go to now. I remember going to KB Toys and stuff when I was younger, and, of course, it went by the wayside as well. So, so yeah, yeah, it sucks. It's going to make uh, – it's going to make the hunt game for these people that that are about the toy hunts and all you know all about going out in the wild and finding figures. It's definitely going to uh, to affect. Uh, it's going to affect them more than anybody. Choncho asks, "What bear is best?" You got me on that one, what bro. Be what bear is best? Oh, well, if just in case, what beer is best? Just in case. Oh, got you. <laughs> Just in case. Uh, I like Yinling. You probably don't even know what that is, Brock. Uh, Yinling or uh, Samuel, Adam Samuel Adams. You like any Browns? Sam Adams is as brown as it's going to get for me. <laughs> I don't like imports that well. That's Samuel good. Adams. Uh, domestic Have, you ever had is Newcastle? Have you ever drank a Newcastle? Oh yeah, yes, yeah, yes. I have drank Newcastle, and, and mm -hmm. they're not Delicious. bad. But I just don't, I just don't like imports that much. Uh, you have to be twenty-one years old to drink alcohol. Just want to let everybody know that, and drink it moderately, <laughs> people. Drink it in moderation, and don't drive. Don't drink and drive. Absolutely, right. never drink and drive. Never drink and drive. Caesar never has, worth drinking and driving. No, it's not. It's not. You can kill somebody. How did you meet George Johnson, a.k.a. Blade? How did I meet Blade? Uh, I met Blade in the syndicate and probably through his Syndapix contest. Um, I'm not sure if that's how we actually met. Uh, we share uh, a common hobby. So I know, um, you know, it was uh, inevitable, I guess, for us to cross paths. But uh, we become we become really tight. In the last uh, three months or so, I talked to him on a semi-regular basis, uh, you know, through PM or, or, or whatnot. And uh, he's a real good guy. I mean, he's – him and uh, you, Brock, are definitely, you know, not trying to squash on uh, on anybody else. But you guys are my two favorite uh, toy hunting uh, YouTubers. No, no, and there's a lot of other ones. Just, just, well, I don't want to hear it. No, no. Please, please, please don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, the only problem, the only, the only problem with you and George is you only put out content like once every <laughs> couple of weeks or so. 
but when it but when it comes out it's it's so you know it's 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 something I definitely look forward to. It's yeah. worth the wait, Brock. It's worth yeah, the wait. I appreciate that. Well, with Brockonomics, uh, I, the hunting every week, I'm not going to be buying uh, all that stuff. Uh, but back to you, sir. Appreciate the kind words. Jeff Roach asked, after Avengers, uh, the Infinity Wars that's coming up, which upcoming superhero action fantasy sci-fi movie uh, are you looking forward to the most this year? Deadpool. <laughs> Deadpool 2. Yeah, that, that's going to be a good one. My wife doesn't want to go watch it with me. I'm really sad about that. Uh, you'll you'll talk watched, her into it, player. Well, everything to... was fine up until, you know, one of those early scenes. Then it was all, all over. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, well, you're going to get some raunchy in, in with the Deadpool movie. So. Yeah, they're kind of like – I almost want to say that those – the movie was like an NC-17. Right, honey? You're not coming to Deadpool 2 with me, right? No, she's shaking her head now. I'm going to have to go with a friend. <laughs> I, might have, I might have to go up north to go watch that with uh, the OBM game. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know. I'm looking forward to, uh, oh, no, looking no, forward I, to no, the... Uh, I'm so sorry, I can't do that uh, because, you know, Jesse may have some sort of concert to go to, so... Can't. Right, right, yeah. Yeah, Jesse's been known to stand people up at uh, movie premieres, so uh, don't get your hopes up with smears on that. <laughs> uh, okay, Plastic Addict. Uh, what toy company would you want to make your likeness? Uh, figure Arts. SH Figure Arts. They, they, they do it kind of small, though. Are you good with that? They run a little small. Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay. Uh, well, I'm short as it is. I'm only 5'9", so... Yeah, but your trouts. My trout. Yeah, <laughs> that, that could be a problem. Chicken fried steak, a.k.a. Mr. Holly, when did you screw everything up and no one ever found out it was you? <laughs> nice. I didn't even care. When did I, when did I what? So when, repeat, uh, the, repeat let, the let question. Me, let me rephrase it. So... What was one of your big screw ups in life? Something that like a like a major like a no no that you did that nobody found out about. Just, uh, well, if I tell you, then if I tell you, then people will have found out about it. So, right, I'll PM you, Josh. Nice. I, I actually appreciate that. <laughs> uh, Caesar asked, "Do you see yourself wearing flip flops or boots in ten years, and which one?" <laughs> uh, I actually don't mind wearing sandals in the summertime, but uh, I wear boots in the fall and winter, like all the time. So I'd say boots, I guess. I don't know how to answer that question, Caesar. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chicken boots. Fried Steak. Uh, what uh, he he calls you, Eric Stink Bait Eisner. What would your name? Uh, what would you name your boat if you had one? <laughs> what would I name my boat? Yeah. Um. That's a good question. <laughs> I'll have to get back to you, Josh. I don't know. Uh, the. No, I can't answer. Well, it, I, he probably he's, hasn't he's, thought about it. So you haven't thought about having supposed, your own boat, right? Help me out, right? Help me out Brock. Your... What's, what do you suggest? What well, do you suggest? I, never, I, never, I don't want to be on a boat. I, I was fresh off the boat once, and that's the last boat I want to have ever associated with me. So uh, I, I'm a land lover. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I feel you, player. I feel you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, I was I fresh off the boat only once. Uh, Cody Spring, no, I think that was a statement, not a question. What uh, plastic wants to know your ex the store exclusive? Which one would it be? Your figure. Mm, store exclusive. Uh, it would be. Uh, it wouldn't be a store exclusive. It would be one of those uh, those figure art. Uh, imported web shop exclusive so to get me you're going to have to order straight from japan 
<laughs> Straight from Japan. Like it. Uh, Jeff Roach wants to know who your favorite hero villain of all time. And you said Captain America was your favorite uh, character, etc. But let's make it a villain. Who's your favorite villain? Favorite villain? Uh, Darth Vader. Choncho 5000 asks, how do you feel about being a figurehead in the community and have helped improve other ACBA style photos, including my own? So figurehead in, in a uh, good sense. Typically figurehead is used in a derogatory sense, but I think he means it in a, in a nice way. I'm, yeah, I understand what he's saying. I mean, I appreciate the love everybody, you know, seems to, uh, to show me as far as in the uh, figure community. And I try to reciprocate it back with any, uh, you know, help and advice and words that I can give anybody on any type of thing, whether it be photography, uh, you know, opinions on a figure, um, anything as far as that goes. So, you know, I just uh, I just appreciate the love and I try to try to reciprocate it back. Uh, Jesse wants you to talk about uh, going live on Facebook for the first time and then getting over that that initial fear and, and you know anxiety and then now that you've done it you know you've probably done it you know close to 20 times I would say G gone live uh, or maybe more I don't know uh, yeah the first uh, time well, I was feeling? yeah yeah I was anxious I was anxious um, I'm a little bit I'm a little bit reserved I'm not quite as uh, I don't know. I don't have the personality as like you and, and Jesse and, and, and whatnot, but, uh, but I'll, I'll tell you, um, the first time I went on, uh, I didn't tell anybody. I just, I went on and I had <laughs> several, I had several people view. So it's kind of like, gotcha. I, I went on and I didn't tell anybody in the group. And, um, immediately after I was done, like same that same night, I was thinking, man, that was such a blast. I can't wait. You know, when can I do this again? So it's uh, it's a little bit nerve wracking at first, but uh, it's it's so much fun. I mean, I, I like talking to people and I like interacting with all my friends uh, in the chat in live in live time. So it's uh, it's a lot of fun. All right. So who who hasn't gone live that you want to see live on Open Box Mafia? That's my question. Oh, good question. Good, qu good question. So throw Let's somebody see. under the bus right now so we can all peer pressure them into it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, and Roach is going to back me up on this one. I'm going to say Grant Ratliff. Oh, yeah. I'd like to see that guy go live. He's he's a, an incredible and hunter. He gets some figs. Yeah, I would have said Jeff Roach, but he took he popped his cherry um, a few weeks ago, I guess, and he's went live. I don't know three or four or five times now. So I would have said Jeff Roach if he hadn't already done it, but now I'm going to say Grant because I know Jeff is wanting Grant to go as well. So yeah, I'll, I'll say Grant. Grant. I, I think uh, as soon as we're done here, maybe you should start a, a, a poll. And uh, just put his name, yes or no. You want to see him go live? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sounds like a plan. Yeah, I'll do that on uh, on the page, and, and we'll see what kind of uh, response we get. A Caesar wants to know: uh, Will you ever come visit Star Wars Land when it opens at Disneyland? Oh, good question. Yeah, I actually want to come out to California sometime. Uh, like uh, Jaime has went out there twice now from Chicago and to the toy shows and if i could get a time to where i could go out there for like a week and be able to hit up uh the the disney disneyland and go to like a toy show the same week yeah i'd love to do it and i've seen i've seen some of the behind the scenes of, of the star wars land they're they're developing and that, that looks insane I've never been to Disneyland or Disney World. My sister, they go to Florida like every other year, but I, I've never went. Paul McGrath uh, wanted – so these comments are obviously delayed because you've been answering for a while now, but he wanted uh, uh, to expl to please explain the trout comment. I'm confused. So if you were just joking a, a long player, <laughs> that's good. If not, just go watch the very, very, very like two or three minutes of the show and you'll you'll understand. <laughs> yeah, uh, probably 
probably, com probably just confused. But who knows? <laughs> I'm getting the evil eye from my wife right now. It's just a tr just a trout, honey. <laughs> Okay, moving on to the next question. NECA or McFarland? Ooh, that's a good question, NECA. Yeah, NECA's killing it, especially with the God of War figure that they just released. That's that's gonna be hard to beat. And McFarland, uh, did, are, did he do the Ghostbusters? No, that's not uh, McFarland, right? What's the most recent McFarland release? Uh, McFarlane is heavy into The Walking Dead, mm. and uh, he used to do Spawn back in the day, but yeah. the, the most recent thing that I've got McFarlane is the five-inch Walking Dead, and now they make the seven-inch uh, color tops or, or whatever they're called. You see them at Walgreens and whatnot, but uh, definitely NECA. This, this, uh, this Kratos, I seen, uh, I seen it for the first time today. They had six or seven. I seen your most recent video, so I took my time and I I picked through all of them and looked at the paint on the face and uh, the sculpt and the paint for twenty two bucks. For twenty two bucks, you can't beat that for twenty two no, bucks. It's an amazing. It's such a beautiful figure, man. You you put any figure next to that at that price point, it's going to be uh, tough to beat. Uh, the guys, what can you uh, can you display the figures that you have? Uh, Kyrus One, who's a customizer, by the way, that guy does really good work. Uh, he wants to see that cable figure again. Can you pull out that uh, cable figure from the Sasquatch Wave? It is pretty nice. I, initially, I wasn't going to pick it up, but I think I'm going to pick it up. Yeah, it's a it's a nice looking figure. It just needs a little yeah. bit of paint, just a little bit, just a little bit of paint. There's a wash on. Uh some of the straps but other than that it's it's uh it's pretty plain as far as the paint goes yeah and, and it's really easy the to do sculpt, the head sculpt is phenomenal though yeah. uh the new parts as far as the straps is concerned he comes with three new weapons that i don't think they'll reuse for anybody else but no one has bro you, i mean you don't know the legs are the nuke uh the nuke figure legs yeah. and the upper torso is new i think it's not the hyperion because the hyperion mold has the um the shelf uh chest where the yeah. chest sticks way out yeah and this one is the is definitely not syndrome. that so uh it's definitely a good figure i think um it's going to oh be kind of hard to find for a while but i think if you're patient like george says uh be patient you with know, yourself be patient uh, with your hunts i was going to let yeah, you finish you'll it. find it yeah, and if you're patient enough, even an egg can and will grow legs. There it is. I guess we watch his stuff, huh? <laughs> we're big we're fan, George. We're, fa we're fanboys, George. We're fanboys of yours. We've memorized your lines. <laughs> uh, Chicken Fried Steak asks, which character would be the most boring to meet in real life? What does IMPO mean? Which character IMPO would be the most – I, I don't know the acronym. Which character, in his opinion, would be the most like him in real life? Would I be think. most boring to me. The most boring to me. <laughs> okay, there, there's your answer, player. <laughs> Uh, Josh, Josh, you're for three, you're for three on questions, Josh. I can't answer your questions, man. <laughs> Be a little more uh, direct with your questions, Holly. He, he just sure. wants to know, like, what uh, what character, uh, let's say Marvel character, do you think would be boring to meet if it was a real life character? So boring to be, meet. Okay, yes. I didn't understand your the wording of your question. Which Marvel character would be boring to meet? Yes. It was, uh, it was probably my fault because uh, English is not my first language. Don't forget that. No, no, that's okay. I just didn't. I meet. I just didn't. We're good. Uh, Marvel character that would be boring. Uh, I don't know. Maybe uh, Professor X. Mm. I'm trying to. 
I'm trying to think more. He probably wouldn't be that boring, though. No. Since vision, he can talk to you without actually using words. Yeah. I don't know. Vision might be kind of boring. I mean, he's kind of boring to me. Yeah. Anyways, uh, I don't know, Josh. That's that's the best I got for now. Good uh, question. Good question. You made me think. What he, what he means is move on from your questions, player. The next one better be a good one, or I'm gonna I'm gonna go over here to the chat and mute you. Like I'm no, I'm just kidding. Uh, Troy, what is your favorite Toy Biz wave and figure of all time? So I think you said Nightcrawler was your your favorite. Right? Yeah, Nightcrawler. Yeah, Nightcrawler is is my favorite. Um. The build of figures I can't say because I don't have the Sentinel or the Apocalypse. Uh, between the Galactus and the Giant Man, they're both solid. I can't really pick one or the other. I like both of them. I'd say they're all four really good baths. I haven't had the other two in hand, though. But Nightcrawler is my favorite figure. So uh, Caesar wants to know who's your favorite Mafia boss. So him or Caesar? Uh, Caesar or, oh. or uh, Jesse? Who's your favorite? <sighs> Uh, you gotta pick one right now. You're putting, either way, hard. you're off. Either way, you're off of uh, open box mafia. Yeah, I'll say uh, no comment. I'll, I like I like them both like brothers. So, uh, for being real though, um, I got to shout out Caesar, Caesar Diaz, and, and Jesse Chavez. Uh, they started Open Box Mafia oh, dude, back. You, you, you confuse me. You confuse me for a second. I use Caesar. I'm going. Is he really doing that? Is it just going to be Caesar? He's just picking Caesar and leaving Jesse in the dust. What's going to be? No. Oh. No. I'm just going to do that. I just want to thank it's them for uh, bringing me in Mafia early on and giving me a chance to kind of help them. Uh, you know, kind of uh, moderate and, and run the page and kind of give me free reign to do certain things in, in the, in the group, uh, as far as the figure photography contest and all that. So, uh, big shout out to Cesar Diaz and, uh, and Jesse Chavez from open box mafia. Wouldn't uh, be here with, I wouldn't be here without either of you guys. So, well, look, look who joined the chat, Ricardo Rosario, your ears must've been burning bra because we were talking, uh, a lot of good things about you. Uh, he wants to know Hasbro Marvel Legends or Toy Biz Marvel Legends. Uh, Hasbro. I got a soft spot for some of the Toy Biz, but uh, I, the Hasbro overall are, are better in my opinion. You got to go with the, the the horse that's in the race. Uh, toy Biz is is gone. But yeah. I love I love the Toy Biz man. Like, like all those figures we talked about uh, for a good portion of the show. Your beast, and there's a lot more that we didn't talk about. The Omega Red was oh. pretty cool. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. The sculpting, the sculpting. Hasbro is not going to beat him on the sculpting, or, or or probably even the paint, which you know is two of the three uh, main components really you're looking for in a figure. But um, I think that Hasbro has been stepping it up with the uh, the body molds. As far as the, the 2099 mold and in, in, in any mold that incorporates the butterfly joints. And they do a fairly good job with the head sculpt. So you gotta go you gotta go with what's current, so Hasbro. I apparently I've been Love taking some business. apparently I've been taking some artistic liberty with how I'm reading these questions. So Caesar says I didn't read it right, and same with uh, Josh. So let me go back up. <laughs> uh, yeah. I do you see him? Oh, I, I missed a ton of questions now that I'm rolling up. <laughs> Oops. Lo siento. All right, I'm going back up. Oh, there's like, hold on. I'm trying to go back to the question. Oh, man, I, I literally missed. I, I think I missed like 20 questions. <laughs> Holy smokes. All right, let me try this again. Caesar says, who's your favorite mafia hitman? Or boss. My favorite mafia hitman or boss. Uh, do you I prefer guess... the, Do you prefer the first question the way I asked it, or the way that Caesar's asking it for reals? <laughs> I prefer the second way. That way, I'm not. I guess Al Capone, if he's talking actual uh, people. I do mean, you know I don't anybody know else other than Al Capone? 
Uh, I do, but I can't think of the guy's name. I, I can picture his face, but I can't think of his name. So I, you got me. Uh, Caesar wants to know when am I coming back to go live on OBM? I've always been on OBM, and I go to the live sessions all the time. I've been there. Oh, like running the the live session? Well, man, I with, yeah. with uh, my my limited time. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm I'm back to work, so I I won't have a, the the same amount of freedom that that I've had for the last couple months. So I'm going to be limited to well, just know, Saturdays. Yeah, well, just know that anytime you have an opportunity and you want to come on and and, uh, and you know live and you want to do it on the page, just sounds good. Hit us with the DM. We'll see. Hit us with the DM and you'll be on there. Maybe maybe the no next pressure. time I maybe the next time I get a figure to open, I'll go open it yep. on Open Box Mafia. Um, what? Uh, so Jamie uh, Jaime asks. What wrestling finisher move would you slap on a scalper? <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, shit. Uh, wrestling fit. I'm not big into – I used to watch wrestling a lot. Um, probably uh, let's go Stone Cold Stunner, I guess. I was going to say the RKO. I like the power mm -hmm. bomb, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the Stone Cold Stunner. We'll have to go Stone Cold Stunner. It, it seems like uh, YouTube censored Jesse on, on their own. Uh, I guess he was told that he was adding too many comments. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, I'm trying to get all. Uh, Jesse asks, I mean, Caesar asks, which is your best figure that you love to pose? Uh, the new Mafex, um, Homecoming Tech Suit Spider-Man. Uh, he also wants to know Dragon Ball Z or Gundam? All Dragon Ball Z. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, so, Mr. Holly says, these are questions... Are, okay, I'm I'm gonna read it exactly. Oh, hold on a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna read it exactly <laughs> as you wrote it. Okay, player. I was trying to help you out, but no more helping out. Okay, so it's gonna be here. We go. L M F A O. These are questions are a Google search as funny questions to ask a friend. Dot dot. L M F A O. <laughs> Caesar, do you think BBTS has good prices? Fair prices. Uh, to be honest, I buy a lot of stuff through there and I think their prices are a little high on some stuff, mm -hmm. but it's kind of a one-stop shop for me because I get a lot of different stuff there. So yeah, a little bit, not too bad, but they could do better. They could do better. Dead Grin Customs, questions to anyone. What figure hasn't been made that you think deserves one? What figure do I think needs made? Oh, let's see here. Um, how about an update on? Uh, we need an updated Kingpin from Marvel Legends comic. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was looking. I, I almost put that on there. Uh, I've never, uh, I never had. I've never owned the old Toy Biz one. The old Toy Biz one is pretty cool looking, uh, but I've never. Yeah, owned I've, I've. I've that one too, uh, Brock. But I have the one with the white suit, mm. and it's um, it's fairly it's fairly nice. I mean, it's limited, of course, with the you know the way that the body is. You're not going to get, you can't really do much with the torso, uh, you know the 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 torso articulation. But it's it's a fairly nice figure. The sculpt and uh, the design of him looks uh, it's pretty accurate. Caesar asks, uh, customs or straight from the box? Uh, I'm going to say customs, even though I don't own that many. I do know the level of work that uh, is involved that, that goes into them. And I know that a good customizer such as yourself, Brock, uh, can turn, uh, you know, something bland into something, you know, pretty extravagant. So definitely customs. 
see which s uh caesar asks which sf s uh HF, are you more excited about Star Wars or Marvel, the new upcoming things? Uh, Star Wars. Kairos asks, is Toys R Us closing all their stores? That's the that's what we're hearing. Every single store is going to be closing, supposedly. Oh, I, so, supposedly there's some sort of announcement on Monday. Uh, let's do a couple more questions and then we'll end. Boxers or briefs? <laughs> That's Caesar's question. Did you answer? I, I didn't hear you. Not briefs. Okay. Uh, burgers or pizza? Uh, him, uh, burgers. I had pizza tonight, and I'm trying to lose weight, so I guess I'll stay fat for another time. All right, guys, we've come to the end of the show. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. Thank you to the chat for being here. And a very special thank you to you, Eric, for giving uh, us your time. Thanks, I know, bro. dude, it's, what is it? It's 1230 where, where you're at right now, and you're an old man, so it's past your bedtime for sure, right? Uh, yeah, it's it's about there. Uh, and I've been using my phone for this, and I've got about 15%. So I think you hit this uh, with pretty good timing, bro. All right, excellent. Well, all right, guys. Well, uh, I'm not sure if we're going to be streaming next week, but uh, stay tuned for announcements. If we do, uh, I'll announce. I'll announce it by Wednesday. If not, I'll probably be uh, waiting until next month uh, to do it. All right. Well, thanks again, guys, for joining us, and we will see you around campus.